Hey guys, it's time to go live again. It's uh, January 11th, 2018. Hope everyone's doing well. I feel good. I feel thankful. And I um, wanted to talk about tonight is conversations equal mental health. Conversations affect your mental health probably more so than anything else. Relationships, if you think about it, relationships are based 90% on the conversations you have with someone. Really, what a, what a relationship is, is just giving someone the access to speak to your mind for an extended period of time. If you don't have a relationship with someone, you don't allow them to speak to your mind. If you if you limit somebody, if you have serious boundaries with them, or if you get to a point where you cut them off, what you're doing is you're saying, I just, I just realized that allowing this person to speak to my mind no longer keeps me in a healthy place. The only reason to keep any relationship, specifically in your personal life, business is a little bit different, but specifically in your personal life, is because that the conversations help your mental well-being. I think once you start to stay in a relationship in which the conversations negatively affect your mental well-being, you are in an unhealthy relationship. If a, a relation if a conversation deteriorates your self-confidence, if a conversation brings you extended periods of anxiety, if a conversation puts fear in your mind, then the person you're having that conversation with should not be in your life. And if they should be at all in your life, it should be with serious boundaries. Nothing will affect your mental health like conversations. And I always try to focus my life on trying to live the best quality life based on what I can control. And I always think about the trifecta, mind, body, and soul. So as I get older in life and as I've downsized and as I've gained financial freedom, as I've gained a huge amount of flexibility, really what I focus on now is not about, you know, what car do I want to buy next or where do I want to travel. For me, it's, you know, maintaining a good, positive, healthy quality of life. And that means that you have to really focus on taking care of your physical and mental health. There's a million different RV channels and a million different self-help channels and all this different stuff. You know, there's no greater investment than investing in your well-being. And nothing affects your well-being, specifically your mental well-being, like conversations. I have cut off people in my life. Why? The answer is pretty much the conversation with that person puts me in an unhealthy space, period. And as you grow older and more mature, you realize that only 10% of a relationship, whether it's a lover, whether it's a family member, doesn't matter, is physical. 90% of all relationships are mental, and the mental part of the relationship is all based on conversation. When you talk to someone, it gives you either an uplift, uplifting, inspirational, forward-driven feeling in your being, in your mind, or it gives you a fearful, anxiety, lack of self-confidence, hurt, anger feeling. Now, certainly, there's going to be times where you get challenged, and you and we all need to be challenged. So I'm not talking about different conversations that we have with people for a small percentage of the overall time. But certainly, I'm talking about 
for the majority of time when you talk to someone, I always go back to if you feel like in your mind, if you feel like in your mind you're walking on eggshells when you're speaking to someone, it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. If you ever get to a point in your life where you don't know if you should cut someone off, if you don't know how to go forward, what you should do is evaluate the conversations that you have with them. How do the conversations you have with someone make you feel? Texting conversations, phone call conversations, interactions... Do they leave you with a positive or negative feeling overall? And uh, and that's your answer. That's your answer. And you need to be able to define that to keep yourself in that mentally healthy space. You know, I saw, uh, you know, for people who are in the Nomad community, I saw Bob Wells make a video about, uh, he's one of the bigger Nomad channels that talks about living, he talks about living cheap and living out of his van. Uh, and I don't believe in that. I just believe in living simply, living below your means, and then however you want to live simply, it's up to you. I choose to live live out of a Jeep Renegade at this time. But I say all that to say his New Year's video was based on reflecting on the past year and evaluating one of his goals. And he said his biggest goal in the new year was not a van build out. It was not buying a home base. It was not. Uh, Anything else than other than taking care of himself better. Self-care. Someone at my job today, I was working with a vendor, I, I asked them, what's your goals for this year? And the majority of people, it was all centered around, you know, taking care of themselves better. The best way to take care of yourself, specifically with your mental health, is just be mindful of who you give access to. Now, not just relationships, videos, content. The, the type of content that you let in your mind affect you. Now, some people may feel my content does not inspire them. It does not uplift them. I tell them they should go their own way. Because I am mature enough to realize that I am not for everyone and everyone's not for me. That's not a bad thing. That's, that's just you know the way life is. We wish everybody the best. That's what I want to share with you is like if you watch n- n- mind numbing videos and you get caught in this YouTube universe of conversations, the conversations that someone has on one side of the screen to the other, and it is about the endless nothingness of what you already know. Like I used to, I got frustrated after a couple months of watching. Uh, initially when I started watching YouTube for, when I first started watching YouTube, it was based on watching interviews and documentaries. For to me, that's how I get some of my content now in a, in a digital world versus reading. I like to listen to interviews of people that have inspired me and pick their brain for lessons learned. That's a conversation. That's a conversation that I have with a mentor. I allow them to speak to my mind. And then... You know, as that evolved, once I started to build my foundation of how I like to think and and lessons of life, you know, part of the fun part was, you know, finding YouTube, finding alternate smaller ways of living in life so you can maximize your joy. And then after a couple months of doing that, what I realized is I was watching, you know, 20 different types of videos about window covers, 20 different types of window, 20 different types of videos about how to fold your back seats down or how to, you know, buy this trailer, do that. And what I'm saying is that's unhealthy. Taking care of your mental health is a priority. Listening to the same thing over and over again after a certain t- amount of time is unhealthy. That's a, To me, for me, I put that in a negative conversation thing. You know, same thing with with a spiritual conversation. You know, if I feel that we've covered a topic tremendously, I used to always bust my friend's chops that he was in a Pentecostal church and they always used to talk about speaking in tongues. 
And that used to be their conversation talking point in almost every service. Uh, Sailing John on the live comments says, Hey Sam, busy day today, just che- just walked in. Love and respect, come and go as you wish, John. You know it's all love and it's all freedom. I want you to do whatever's best for you. It's good to see you, brother. I uh, hope you had a good day. Hope you're staying positive. Hope you're pushing forward. Respect and love to John from New Jersey, living full-time out of his sailboat and uh, pushing forward in life. I hope your day at your job went good today, brother. I hope your day at your job today went good. And uh, let's, let's, let us be thankful for positive days. Let us be thankful for healthy conversations at work. Um, and if there isn't healthy conversations, you know, you have to limit access. You have to limit access. Because you need to keep yourself in a good mental space. That's part of pushing forward. That's part of staying inspired. Part of staying inspired and sailing John, he's on the right track. The brother says, awesome exclamation mark, moving forward. Amen, brother. Amen. You know, part of part of staying inspired, part of moving forward is not like some pep. I always get upset when I see like pep rally self-help guys or self-help women, whether it was in a church, whether it was, you know, um, whether it's Tony Robbins, whether it's Paula White, whether it's whoever. I always get upset when I just see a pep rally and just a bunch of hyping people up. A red flag goes in my spirit when I'm in a business meeting and it's really, you can tell it's just somebody giving a sales pitch. There's really not a lot of content to what's behind the meeting. The meeting isn't really driven by specific content. It's driven by pure energy. Now, energy is good, but sus- the only way to, dis- to sustain that energy is to have a good well-being. And I'm sp- speaking now in this video about a good mental well-being. You know, I was in a conference the other day. We were all at this round table. And we were talking about this project that had to get done by a certain time. And there was this one guy, he was real he was real smart, he was real direct, and I just liked his style. Everybody went around the room talking about the project and what either needed to be done, what their opinion is, and how they plan on executing it. And this one guy, at the end of the meeting, we were just about to wrap it up. He goes, all that's great, all that's great. Everybody, you know, presented a lot of good things. He goes, but what I've experienced in all these different type of meetings throughout my career is that there's a lot of energy here. Everybody wants to get stuff done. But after this meeting ends, no one follows through on a consistent manner. And that's a lack of sustainability. It's some way that spikes up. There's a lot of energy, but that energy level and that mentality and that mindset, that doesn't maintain over time. It's just a spike up. It's an adrenaline rush. It's a sugar rush. You know what happens to a sugar rush after you eat a piece of cake, after you eat a muffin, after you eat this, that. You spike up and then you crash down. Why do I mention that? Because part of moving forward, part of staying in a good mental space is watching and maintaining your mental health and being mindful of what you're feeding your mind, what, who you're allowing access to speak into your mind. Your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your politician, your YouTube nomad guy, whoever. Be mindful of that because those things matter. You need a level of being entertained, you need a level of knowledge, you need a level of laughing. But every relationship is based on one thing, conversation. That's what a relationship is, it's just conversations you have with someone. You can't get all, you you can't get everything that you need from one person. You know, God places different people in our life and everyone has like a piece of the puzzle. But you can't get anything out of a relationship that the conversations hurt your mind you know mental health and I see some live comments and I want to get to them all Joe I see you Dana I see you I'm going to read your comments very sure I appreciate you guys leaving a comment you know mental health is surrounded by just basically two things the conversations other people have with you 
and then the conversations you have with yourself. That's mental health. Show, I, I can show you someone with good mental health and with bad mental health. Someone with good mental health has someone who speaks to them well and then speaks to then that person speaks to themselves well. A bad mental health is someone who has relationships that, that, that other people speak to them badly and then they speak to themselves badly. Conversations with other people and with yourself are pretty much the entire picture of mental health other than some genetic things that may be outside of our control or understanding. You can't focus on that. Why? Because that's outside of your control. You have to focus on life on what you can control. Don't get caught in mind bender questions. Like, you know, if the earth rotated the opposite way, what do you think will happen? I mean, come on. You know, unless you're in physics and you're trying to figure out a problem, that's all distraction. Let me get to some uh, comments here. Joe Humphreys from the UK. Love and respect you, Joe Humphreys. Thinking about getting a Jeep Renegade. I'm still loving mine. Uh, Joe, hey, Sam. I uh, heard about Trump's latest a antics. Uh, the last thing I heard about Trump, I saw the meeting uh, that he had a couple days ago with different people from uh, Congress about addressing uh, immigration or trying to. And um, what was the other thing I saw? Um, I saw a press conference. I didn't see anything like really majorly different other than what I already know, you know, his style to be. Uh, what, it, what specifically are you talking about? And, I, and I'll give you my opinion on it because, again, I'm open to talk about anything, sex, politics, religion. Uh, I just don't know the specific one you're referencing when you say annex. Dana says, hey, Sam, I hope you had a great day. I did, Dana. Thank you for asking. It was a little busy, but it was good. Dana says, I had a great day staying busy. Good to see you. And then she gave the uh, love emoji uh, face. Thank you, Dana. It's always good to see you. It's always good to hear your positive voice. You know, Dana inspires me. Why does Dana inspire me? Because, you know, I think you stay pretty positive on a consistent basis uh, as far as your conversations, right? You know, my conversations with Dana are usually very positive. Um, now, certainly you need a mix. You know, you need, you know, you need to be challenged. You need to have, you know, just love. You know, you need a good mix of things, but... Uh, Dana stays in a in a good space as far as her words and how she uh, something to, you know it's an admirable quality. Um, Dana, how do you feel? I want to ask this qu question to you, Dana. Uh, how do you feel your mental health is right now at this point in your life on a scale of one to ten? Um, Joe Humphrey says uh, he's come out today and called Haiti and El Salvador shithole countries. Um, yeah, well, I definitely. Uh, well, one is I'd have to read it in context uh, and see the whole thing because that's what I learned too as I as I get older and mature. I have to read that quote for myself in context because I know different times. Even though I'm, I'm you know, people who watch this channel know that I'm not, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not totally anti-Trump, but certainly there's some videos I made that totally kind of blast them. Um, and I made some some of those statements too when Obama was in, but I know a lot of people don't know me since then. So one is to be fair to Trump, even though I don't support his policies, but I, you know, some things I, I could agree with him on, but I would have to see the, what he said, I would have to see how he said it in context, and then I would have to form an opinion on it. Uh, you know, overall, you know, I, I don't think, you know, he's just not, he's not in depth. He's, again, he's a salesman, not a bad thing because you need people to sell. Uh, but I have to, you know, like, I really need to understand more, and he's. I need to understand more of his position on that. Was he talking about immigration? So how do I feel about building a wall? Well, I believe, yeah, you know, I believe a, a wall is really more a symbolic thing. It really, you know, most experts or most people that have knowledge on immigration, specifically on in uh, South America, or to the southern states, the wall is not the problem. It's um, it's just the fact that you know when you have a neighboring country that has high crime and that has low opportunity, you're always going to have people that want a refuge into a, a land that has better opportunity. That's human nature. I would do the same thing. You would do the same thing. My forefathers did the same thing. So if you want to build a wall for a symbolical reason, I'm fine with that. But then you also have to build a new Ellis Island, you know, because now immigrants don't come from Europe like, like my grandparents did from Italy. Immigrants come from Southern uh, parts of uh, our borders. So if you want to build a new wall, fine, but then you have to also build a new Ellis Island 
uh, in Texas or wherever in Southern state. Why? Because not only do you have to protect the borders, you have to have a clear path to citizenship. If you want people to come in this country legally, and let's be honest, Donald Trump, he's married an immigrant. His wife is an immigrant. Uh, how'd she get her papers? Pretty much from being hot. You know, she was able to be a model and go on a work visa and get her papers. She met a rich, powerful man, and I'm sure that helped push her papers to the floor of the line. But, you know, look at the obvious. A lot of people don't, you know, realize that. I mean, you know, his wife's an immigrant, so you can't be too anti-immigration. So he's for legal immigration. So if you're for legal immigration, uh, I, I have no problem with saying, I see, I'm not like totally like against like securing the borders and having, you know, enforcing laws. You know, I'm not, you know, you can't just have no type of structure. So I'm okay with that if that makes them happy. But then in parallel, you have to have like a new Ellis Island. You have to have a new way where people can, you know, does anyone understand like if you were from another country, how do you legally get immigrated into this country? There's not a clear way. So if there's not a clear way, you're leaving people to either one, come into this country and have babies right away or get married to a citizen so they can just get their papers. I don't blame them. I would do the same thing. So, you know, as part of the leadership is saying, yeah, let's secure the borders, but it's also saying, yeah, we also need to grow our country, and part of that means that we have to have a pathway to citizenship, a new Ellis Island. Um, you know, Google, Google was founded, we're on a platform right now that was invented by Google, well, well that was bought out by Google, YouTube, uh, that was invented basically by immigrants. Most of the large technology companies um, have roots in immigration, so you need immigration to grow your country. Um, so it's it's a it's a it's a deeper look. Now, certainly, again, I get pissed off at different people. I got pissed off at Obama certain times. I got pissed off at Trump a lot of times because I tend to agree with Obama's policy more. Um, but the bottom line is, uh, yeah, what am I saying? I, I, you know, the bottom line is, I just feel overall his conversations are unhealthy. Now, it's also, though, unhealthy, the conversations where it's just around political pandering. That's an unhealthy conversation because you get no traction on actually making progress. So society's str struggling right now for balance. The answer isn't being totally like blah, 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 blah political conversation, but it's not totally just being abrupt and just being too blunt. Both of those conversations are negative. Somewhere in the middle, you got to find some type of balance, uh, but that's just struggle. Good question, uh, Joe. Thank you for bringing something fun to talk about. But if you want to expand on that, I'm, I'm free to talk about more. Uh, again, I just don't want to give you an ill-informed decision. I try to slow my mind down a little bit on it. Uh, Amario, hey, Sam. Blessed and greetings to you. Blessed to you, Amario. Oh, May, May West from Brooklyn's got a new profile picture. Check her out. Peace and love to you. Hey, Sam. Hey to you, May. Dana. Dana says... Uh, her uh, family origins come from Sicily, amen, so it's another uh, immigrant in here as well, um, which we all are to some extent. Sailing John, but no wall on the waterway, both east and west side, question mark. Well, yeah, well, the other law that I saw that I had interest, because you know I like the ocean, was uh, the Trump administration basically, as best they could, because it isn't legislation, but they basically uh, pushed a legislation to allow offshore drilling uh, on all coasts. Whereas under Obama, there were certain coastal uh, areas, specifically on the Atlantic Ocean, that were uh, not allowed to drill for oil. So, of course, Trump, he favors the oil industry and he favors drilling for more. Now, Florida seeked, uh, Florida seeked uh, an exemption and they were granted it, if you Google it, uh, because you know, Florida says that most of our tourism comes from uh, the beautiful coastlines. And we saw that even uh, in the Gulf Coast, how... That was affected negatively a few years ago when BP had that oil spill, and that was under Obama, um, and you know it, it destroyed a lot of uh, things for a period of time. So it's a balance, right? You need energy. You know, we're not, we can't just have no gasoline. You know, we can't just not build. We can't just not have cars running. You need gasoline, but you also need, you know, to continue to work on green energies, and uh, you know, you just need to be smart about it. It's not easy. It's a balance. Uh, but, you know, that's always the dynamic there. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's very interesting. And, um, but in my in my life, back to my, and I'm, thank you for all these uh, good comments, because it's good to talk about, I want to talk about anything you guys want to talk about. This is a good time to connect. You know, my main thing was just, I said, what do I want to talk about tonight? And it was about, it was about conversations. 
it was about mental health. You know, more and more now that I settled in with my downsizing, I settled in with my financial uh, health. You know, I just, you know, to, the only way to really live a good existence is try to take care of your physical and mental health. Um, I really, you know, that, that's the trifecta in life. Physical, mental, uh, certainly financial to a certain extent, but, um, and I, I, and conversations to me are the key to mental health. They really are. Uh, I don't see how you can have conversation with someone that either one, you just don't vibe with, two is you're on just totally different pages the way you view life, or three is when you talk to that person, you feel manipulated or you feel unvalued and you feel like, you know, they're pacifying you or whatever. And um, you know, that's just going to hurt your mental health. You know, like I've made videos about you need your self-confidence, uh, you need your peace. Uh, why don't, why can't a lot of people sleep at night? Uh voices in their head from anxiety and from conversations no man's land i see you on the live comments love and respect to you no man's land no man's land is very intelligent brother thank you no man's land for adding your voice to the conversation always reliability and consistency that's no man's land that's what he says one of the keys to success i agree with that you know lack of sleep a lot of time to come well let me say this first i was um Walking a beach town in New, in New Jersey over the summer, and I shared this story before, but I want to share it again. I was walking a beach town in a beach town uh, over the summer in New Jersey, and I was just walking kind of like up and down the main strip, and there was this one small art gallery, and I enjoy art. I I love the creative arts. I think that's a great part of life, uh, underrated part of life, uh, at least for me. Uh, so I go into this art gallery, very small. It, it used to actually be a um, well, it was an old HVAC contractor's like uh, office, and I think that contractor was even this girl's father. But it like it just turned, it just got converted from like a contractor's office to uh, an art gallery, and it was very informal. It wasn't anything fancy. And um, I walk in there, uh, I see this uh, lady, uh, you know, woman. She's probably middle aged. And uh, she's painting, and she's got some of her art up. And I say, man, you know, it really some great art. I uh, really enjoy it. I said, do you mind if I interview you? At that time, I was just starting to do some interviews on my uh, different social media. Because, I, like I say, I enjoy healthy conversations. I enjoy interviews. I, I watch interviews on YouTube. I watch. That's how I try to pick the brain of different people and get different lessons. So I said, do you mind if I interview you so I can understand your mindset and understand you know why you create and who you are because beyond behind every creation is a creator and there's a mindset behind that creator you know that mental health is you driving that person to create something and so I said do you mind if I interview and she thought about it and she says ah uh, no I don't want to because if I interview with you I'm gonna re I'm going to be replaying that conversation in my mind the rest of the day and it will just it won't it will hurt me so a lot of times you know people don't want to engage in conversations because they're so hurt mentally um a lot of times a couple comments i'm going to get to them right there i just want to finish this so thank you for the comments guys a lot of times people don't engage in conversation because they've been so mentally hurt and and hearing any, and getting involved in any in-depth conversation is just going to expose them to more hurt. Because like I say, what I've learned in my life that mental health has two parts and they're both centered around conversations. What words someone speaks to you and then what words you speak to yourself. That's a conversation. So when we've been so hurt and when our confidence has been beat up so much and confidence is part of mental health, humility is also part of mental health. You got to balance this, not easy. And when our, when, when our, when our well-being mentally has been beat up so much, we start to talk to ourselves very poorly. And that really like kind of just finishes off our mental health. And so what I've learned 
in a, in, my, in a season of my life where I had to heal is I had to withdraw from everyone. I often talk about this in a lot of my live feeds is that part of healing is withdrawing, taking a step back. There's been certain relationships that I just couldn't handle. I wasn't mature enough or the person was manipulative or whatever. And I had to just totally step back. There were certain, you know, financial investments that I was totally in over my head. I wasn't ready for. I had to take some lessons and then I had to just totally step back from. Part of healing is stepping back from what's hurting you for a season, not for eternity, for a season. And so you step back from something so you can pick up the pieces and evaluate. But once you step back, once you step back, you hear the echoes of different conversations you had with people and they're replaying in your mind. So then what that does is that feeds on how you talk to yourself and you cannot be you cannot repair and then move forward. John talked about moving forward. Yeah, that's the only way to live life. You can't live life backwards. Very hard though. Very hard not to want to go backwards. Letting go is a sign of good mental health. Holding on is a sign of poor mental health. Not easy. And so... After we've stepped back from something... Part of rebuilding ourselves and growing past what hurt us is starting to really work on how we talk to ourselves. Then once you talk to yourself good and you re-engage society in a certain way, you re-engage better than before if you're really interested in about growing and going forward. If you don't want to go forward, then none of this matters to you. Once you've healed and you've learned to talk to yourself well, you re-engage society. And then once you do that, and then you experience, because you will experience the same lesson in some way. Once you experience the same thing where you run into somebody in your life and you feel like the, the relationship's starting to get unhealthy. The person doesn't talk to me the right way or whatever the case may be, it's just we don't vibe. You learn that you will not allow relationships, you will not allow people to have access to your mind if they don't talk to you as well as you talk to yourself. Now, there's a balance there, too, because certainly we need a level of people keeping us honest, myself included. I mean, certainly you need people lovingly once in a while to say, look, you know, you're, I don't agree with you on that point, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not trying to say you just want people around you that just, yes, 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 yes. But on average, you know, you want people around you that speak to you as well as you should speak to yourself. Because conversations equal mental health. Never forget it. Let me get back to some comments. Uh, Sailing John says, no financial equals no quality of food and no health care. I agree with that. And so how, based on what we can control, there's some things in life we can't control. Based on what we can control, how do we improve our financial health? We work. We have to have an income. We live below our means. We cannot outspend... You know, I, again, I know six peop, people that make six figures and that are in debt. You have to work, and then you have to live below your means. And then that gives you the best opportunity to be financially free. And I believe that trifecta, take care of your financial, physical, and mental health, and um, and spiritual as well. But And, and you know, the rest will work itself out. And we're going to go through ups and downs. We all need grace. We all need help. We all need people to give us opportunities along the way. But people have given me opportunities along the way. And I have given other people opportunities along the way. And sometimes people get opportunities and they still don't make anything of them. So, again, I, 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 don't, I try to avoid as I get more mature trying to figure out the world and why certain people seize the moment, why certain people don't, why certain people have the... You know, I know people that have the same opportunities as others, but they just don't capitalize off them, you know. You know, I grew up in a household, we were all pretty much raised the same way, but, you know, my siblings went one way, I went one way, so there's no one answer, there's a Cain, there's an Abel. I try to avoid the endless dark hole of trying to figure out everything in this world. What I try to figure out is, what do I need to do to improve myself and keep myself in a healthy space? And that is a constant, daily self-improvement journey. I wrote today uh, in my journal that self-improvement is a... Self-improvement never stops. Stay positive on yourself. 
period. Um, Christopher, Christopher uh, Berger, sorry about the late reply, but Christopher wrote, I don't believe in any one motivational speaker. I take the mo most important information that I think will help me in my life, and I apply it accordingly, exclamation mark. I find you very inspirational. Well, Christopher, love and respect. One is I totally agree with your your initial uh, opening statement, which is wisdom for anyone who's listening. You don't. He basically said he doesn't put any one person, motivational speaker or whatever, on a pedestal. I totally agree. Don't put anyone on a pedestal, myself included, your parents, your lover, your children, anyone. But what he's saying is that he he takes what he can, what he can from different people that are either inspiring to him or even not. There's there's people you can learn that totally you despise, but you can still learn something from. Him. He takes the little bits and pieces from them. I'm sure he puts his own critical thinking on it, and then he goes from there. And uh, and certainly there will be people that inspire you, uh, and you don't have to agree with them 100%. But thank you one for the compliment, and thank you for the wise comment. I think that's wisdom. That's how I kind of live my life. Uh, which I've learned over time is that, um, and that's why I said when I first started watching YouTube like 10 years ago, what did I watch? It wasn't Nomad channels. It was, I used to just watch interviews on different people, whether it was Madonna, uh, you know, whether it was Tupac, uh, whether it was um, a political leader. Uh, I still watch political leaders. I mean, I, what was I watching the other day? I was watching an interview with the uh, president of Syria. I watched an interview with the president of uh, Korea. I watched an interview with um, somebody from the United Nations. Does it mean that I like was agreeing with everything they were saying? No. What I was doing was I was trying to, you know, pick their brain on different things that either they say for their own reason or they have, you know, some type of reason. You know, I just listen. But then again, I don't get too much into any one person where I become them. And that's the key to life. You know, you take what you can from someone, but you form your own thought. You know, you don't want to be inspirational nomad. You don't want to be Tupac. You don't want to be uh, Bill Clinton. You don't want to be Donald Trump, you know. And it's not bashing anybody, including myself. You want to take what you can from someone and be yourself. But you have to guard your mind. And part of guarding your mind is not listening to conversations that are overall hurting your mind or not adding to your mind. Like I said, I mean, there's a certain point in the in when I would then, on a different note, when I was starting to watch the YouTube, how many... YouTube videos can I watch with somebody, you know, talking about, you know, this is where I poop in the back seat of my car. I mean, it's good for a certain amount of time and you may have to watch it once in a while, but there's only so much you can take it at before it like, it doesn't help you. It just, it numbs you. It's like you, how many times can you see like this, this is where I take a shit. This is where I pee. It's like, you know, it has to be a well-balanced mindset for me. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. That's what too, I'm going to get to the next comment. Milano. Well, let me just say hi to Milano. Milano. Milano says, drink a Corona and problem solved. Laugh out loud. I hear that, Milano. I hear that, brother. Milano's got a good sense of humor. Good sense of humor is a sign of good mental health. I've also never met anyone with good mental health that doesn't laugh. Milano, I don't know if you watched the Bob Wells video uh, from, I watched it this morning from last night. He's at the RTR and this, I, I guess he has some type of a lady friend that he knew helped organize it. And I guess they had like you know, a little bit of a problem with a couple people. And he said, let me tell you something this. If you run into this lady, she's basically the one responsible for organizing this. Without her, it wouldn't be possible. I give him a lot of respect for acknowledging her. He said, when you talk to her, you talk to me. She's my representative. When you talk to Milano, you're talking to me. Milano's my representative down in Miami. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I don't know why it made me laugh when I saw when I saw that video this morning. God bless you. Uh, I got I got lost my train of thought too. I was gonna say something, but I just let me keep reading the comments. Amaria, when I'm going out of my mind, and then she gives like the grin emoji, it means I am carrying the weight of my past. Excellent comment. I totally agree with that. Mental health is letting go and letting go often, letting go of certain conversations, and speaking to yourself well. You know, when you're carrying too many conversations from the past, you start to really beat yourself up mentally, mental health. And um, and then you start to speak to yourself poorly, and then it's just a vicious cycle. You know, when I see someone with mad, bad mental health, and I see certain people, whether it's in my family or whether it's in society, look, most people struggle with mental health. And I see... I, I see exactly what Amaria is stating is that they're carrying conversations from their childhood and they can't let it go. They're carrying conversations from an argument they had and they can't let it go. Letting go is an art form. 
Uh, I think they should give a whole uh, study program in high school and any other schooling about letting go for mental health. You know, like I watch when I don't watch really sports that much anymore, but I remember when I used to like football and I used to watch it, and I used to after the game they were interviewing a cornerback. A cornerback is not a quarterback, but a cornerback. He is a defensive player that guards the wide receivers. And it's a key position on the field because if he gets beat on the play, the wide receiver can run open, catch the pass, and score a touchdown. So I was watching this one. It was like a star cornerback. And I was watching. They had lost a game. He got interviewed after the game. And they said, you know, you're a star uh, cornerback and everything. How are you going to handle this horrible defeat and being burned by this wide receiver? He goes, how do you prepare for the next game? He goes, do you know how I'm able to be so good and have a solid career and being a star cornerback? And the reporter goes, no, that's why I'm asking you. He goes, I have a short memory. I take the lesson and then I, I let it go. I don't focus on the play I was beat on. I take the lesson and I let it go. You can't focus on the relationship where you lost your mind and you got too controlling or you got too possessive or you got too obsessed. You got to take the lesson and then you got to let it go. You can't focus on the investment that, you know, you got too excited, you got too over emotional, you took a big financial hit and, you know, then you start to talk to yourself poorly. You got to take the lesson and let it go. The conversations that other people have with you or the conversations you have with yourself equal your mental health. And uh, sometimes, like, I make myself laugh. Like, Milano, why do I like Milano so much? I love his sense of humor. I love the lightness of him. Because it's often like me sometimes. Like, throughout the course of the day, different people I work with, you know, part of my gift is I, you know, I like to bring a little bit of seriousness, but then also a little bit of, like, you know, fun and uh, enjoyment to the situation. Um... Because that's part of a healthy conversation. You know, that's the one thing where I disagreed with President Obama. I liked a lot of his policies. I thought he was a man of uh, overall integrity. But one t- a lot of times what he would do is he would sit there for an hour and give people uh, a legalistic or a, a lawyer's version of a lecture. One is you have to realize that people have about a seven-second attention span. Uh, you know, most times when even people, when people talk to me, I listen to them for about 10 seconds. So two is that, and two is, you know, (laughs) to keep the mind engaged, it can't just be blah, 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 blah. It has to be a level of information, a level of excitement, and then a level of laughter. To me, that's a good conversation. Again, trying to not, I'm really not trying to get too political on this, but what I'm trying to say is how do I really, how do I evaluate a good conversation? A good conversation to me isn't just about, I want to talk about the Bible for an hour. It's not about, I want to talk about politics for an hour. It's not about, I want to talk about being a nomad and shitting in the back of your car for an hour. To me, a good conversation is a level of informity. It's a level of passion and it's a level of laughter. To me, when I see those components uh, in In a conversation, I said, well, this is a keeper. This is someone I want to allow access to my mind. This is a conversation I want to continue. You know what I mean? When I see a conversation about the same thing, about same contentious things all the time with the same, you know, I don't want to be involved. It's just not good for me. It doesn't lead me anywhere. I want to go forward. And um, these are my thoughts on that. Uh, Pack Live. Pack Live from California. How are you, Pac? What's up, Sam? Pac, uh, giving me the sunglass emoji. What's going on, brother? How are you, Pac? Sam and John. We all need to be inspired. Sam, I shared about being inspired with someone today. And you know what? It's really the way to go. Well, I totally agree with that, brother. I totally agree with that. I mean, I, you know, if we're not inspired, you know, life becomes, um, you know, not worth living. We don't, you know, we get, we can get to a certain point. Now, again, there's certainly... Different things that can come up in life that will make you resent life. I'm not going to give you a bunch of BS here. But again, I always go back to when you get into that space, you got to just focus on what can you control. So what you can control is as best you can, you know, how you take care of yourself. 
And some people can't, you know, they struggle with doing that, but I have to plant a seed. This is for myself and for anyone who wants to listen is, how do you stay inspired by taking care of yourself well? Physically, emotionally, and mentally, and mentally. Uh, part of taking your care of yourself well mentally part is, is staying inspired. So when you have good conversations, what does that do? That inspires you. When you have like, you know, bullshit conversations, what does that do? It drains you. There's like that famous, um, the famous thing I see on social media all the time. It says that people either inspire you or they drain you. Choose wisely. And I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. You know, there's different relationships that I cut off with girls after a certain period of time. Why? Because I felt like all the conversations we're doing were just draining me. None of them were really inspiring me. Um... And so, again, whether it's a lover, whether it's a job, I often talk about that. I did a live video on that. I think it's a great live video. It's three, three reasons why people leave their jobs. The number one reason is not money. It's their direct manager. Why is it their direct manager? The conversations they have are, are not good. A relationship you have with someone is 90% based on the conversation you have with them. If someone can't have a good conversation with you, then you're not going to stay around. You're not going to stay inspired. You're going to look for the next exit. Conversations are the key to all relationships. And that's why I try to say that I try to be very mindful in how I communicate, how I feel. I try to hit the trifecta. I try to be a little bit informative. I try to show passion. I try to show humor. Does that mean if you that does that mean everyone's gonna like you? No. Some people are not for you, and you're not for some people. You can't control that. So it doesn't mean certain people are good, certain people are evil. But what it means is, these are, you have to have some type of standard for your life. And everyone has to have their own. I'm not saying, you know, if you have to be like me, but you should form some standard on how you allow other people to speak to you in a conversation and how you allow yourself to speak to you. You understand? How do you allow yourself to speak to you? You have to have a standard on how you talk to yourself. That's a conversation. And nothing will improve your quality of life, specifically regarding your mental health, like talking to yourself well. And starting it when, like I say, I, I don't want to, you know, you shouldn't be saying that, you know, you're an asshole and, you know, this and that. And that's not healthy. Mentally, not healthy. Just say, all right, I'm going to struggle here, but I'm going to get better here. This is what I'm going to do. I mean, you know, have a short memory sometimes. I mean, that's helpful. Move past it, take the lessons, and move forward. <clears throat> uh, Milano, thumbs up. You speak to Milano, you speak to me. That's my guy, Milano. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, brother. God bless you, Milano. Pack Live. We have to adapt and live in adaptation. I totally agree with that, Pack Live. Great comment. Um, Thank you, Pack Live. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, everyone. Pack Live says... Adaptation is key. What is adaptation? To adapt. What does it mean? You know, when I think of adapt, I think of uh, a butterfly. You know, it changes from a caterpillar to a you know, flying creature. Think of a, like a camouflage-like lizard. I don't know what they call it. Different things that they change over time to thrive in their area and to protect themselves. So adaptation is you're in a relationship and the conversations get negative. How do you adapt? You don't fall apart. You fall back. You evaluate. You take the lessons learned. And then you grow past it. You, you, you evolve. You adapt into a different, better person. You don't die. You know, that's the difference between death and evolution to a certain extent. This is not, you know... Is that, you know, you decide that you're not going to fall apart. You're going to become a new, different person, reinvented with a, um, and try with the grace of God. We can't fully figure, you know, we can't have so much pride that we say, I'm just going to figure this out myself. Look, I believe in the grace of God. So with the grace of God, you take a hit in a relationship, you take a hit financially, and you don't give up. And you try to pick up the pieces and one day at a time, one brick at a time, one healthy conversation at a time, you start to rebuild your life. And you start to grow 
and adapt into even a better person than you ever thought you could be. And that's part of a rich life. Anyone can go in a desert and live in a van, to be honest with you. A child molester can do that. You know, when I saw a lot of those vans in the RTR and everything like that, all those white vans in my mind sometimes, it just, and there's no disrespect, it's like a little bit tongue-in-cheek, it looked like a child molester's uh, convention. You know, we see all those white vans and like contractors. Anyone, anyone, a child molester, a rapist, a killer, anyone can sell all their shit, put it in the back of a van and go in a desert or go in a Walmart. Anyone can do that. You don't want to be anyone. You want to be the best you. You want to live a well life, mind, body, and soul. And part of that is, is way beyond an RTR. It's way beyond learning how to get a fucking P.O. box. It's way beyond... It's way beyond living cheap. It's about picking yourself back up when you fail in a relationship. Picking yourself back up when you fail financially. Picking yourself back up when you fail, period. And learning to engage with yourself and with others in healthy conversation. And when it doesn't, you have boundaries. You have standards. You have a certain way that you want to live life. And it's not just cheap. It's inspired. John said he was reflecting on that today. On the power of inspiration. Which inspiration? Inspiration is living a well life. You're excited again. You were destroyed. You felt like, you know, everything's shit. But somehow, you got re- re-inspired. And that's powerful. That's life-changing, in my opinion. Pack Live says, the wind of life. I agree. Milano... Milano says, Bob Wells, I like him, but he takes things too serious. RTR, of course, he's going to have uh, problems, noise, generators, people, drinking, loud music, laugh out loud, explanation mark. Yeah, I mean, you know, the RTR, it's basically just a convention. It's a concert. It's a convention for people that want to get together. There's nothing wrong with that. And I I agree with his statement. He had made like, look, he's got like 2,000 people there or something like that. And out of those 2,000 people, they had to call the cops last night or something. Because there was a couple people that were making noise and being drunk and going crazy or whatever. And I agree with his statement. He basically said, look, it doesn't matter where you go in this world. When you put that many amount of people together, you're always going to have basically 10% of those people will be assholes. So I agree with Bob on that. I don't think it's his fault uh, for, you know, a 10% asshole rule. I think you get that. Even if you're totally uh, positive and, you know, you're going to get that no matter where you go in life. Uh, and, um, you know, that, that that convention is for people that like to be around other people and camp. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not for me, but it's nothing wrong with that. Renee. Hey, Sam. Smiley face. Hello, everyone. Just finished working today. Well, that's a blessing, Renee. I hope you had a good day at work. It feels good. You know, work sucks to go. But, um... It's good to, when you're done, you feel accomplished. Um, and obviously, we all thankful that we get paid for what we do. Uh, and um, you have to have something to do. You know, I see a lot of retired people struggle. Now, I'm the type of person where I keep myself busy and occupied with positive, productive things. A lot of people can't do that. Even my mother, at the age of 69... Uh, again, she still wants to work because she needs someone to structure her day. Um, but, you know, again, I, you know, work, you should work for a decent wage. I still think minimum wage is too low. I saw Walmart today increase their minimum wage to $11 an hour, or they will. And they gave credit to the uh, Trump tax cuts. Uh, uh, I still think that's bad. Why? Because the big corporation break we gave... $11 hours is eleven dollars an hour is still unlivable. And uh, so that should have been negotiated was we give you this huge corporate tax break, $15 an hour, if not $20 an hour should be minimum wage. If you're willing to work, you should be able to live a decent quality life. You can't live a decent quality life at $11 an hour. Now, I know the next argument is that's a starter's position. I've been there. But what I've also learned in life is not everyone in society... It has a mindset and an ability to go beyond a certain level. There's a certain segment of society that, you know, their their top out level, it's no disrespect, is, is going to be in Walmart. 
And if someone's willing to work, willing to work and show up for 40 hours a, a week, working in Walmart or working at ShopRite or working at Publix, that's an admirable thing. And to me, they should be paid a living wage so they don't have to go on social programs. You know, 15 to $20 an hour is livable after, I mean, so I still think that was a ripoff, wasn't negotiated properly. Corporations got more than the people. I don't care if uh, Walmart employees go up to $11 an hour. That's still not livable. I understand Wells Fargo's went up to $15 an hour, but how many em how many well Wells Fargo employees are at that entry level position? And that still doesn't help the mass majority of people. Now that's my opinion. I know certain people disagree with that. That's okay. Again, I try to share on all things that matter to me and that uh, I believe in. Oh, uh, uh, and not forgive me if I'm pronouncing your name or but Jazz, jazz Vendor. I'm gonna call you Jazz. Uh, jazz from Totowo. Totowa, New Jersey, and I used to work by Totowa, New Jersey, uh, so love and respect to you, uh, uh, Jazz, and forgive me again because I don't want to mispronounce the name, uh, but love and respect to Jazz, says, yes, I quit my job because of the people were draining me at work, amen, that's the number one, and thank you too, Jazz, for the co positive comments today, uh, they meant a lot, they were very encouraging to me, so I appreciate you, love and respect to you, Jazz, um, and if you, you know, Number one reason people quit their job is either their direct manager or the people they work with. So it's a huge thing. But uh, keep pushing forward. Uh, what I would say is my number one piece of advice to you would be just try to re-engage as quickly as possible back into the workforce. Because from my experience in life, what you don't want is a gap in your resume. You don't want to see a person that went from, you know, well, where were you working between 2017 to 2020? And if it shows that, you know, you were just like doing whatever, that could be looked on negative. But also, every time we leave a job, it's an opportunity to find a better job. It's an opportunity to possibly start your own. And so, um, thank you for sharing. Um, and I believe in you. Uh, just get back up and find something better and do something better. And maybe you already did. So maybe, uh, I'm, maybe I'm just sharing this to share. But thank you, Jazz, for all your encouragement. And uh, welcome. Welcome. Peace and love to you, Jazz. Total one New Jersey's in the house. Milano, it's 73 degrees in Fahrenheit. Uh, kind of warm now, Milano says. Well, Milano, it's 43 degrees Fahrenheit here um, in the tri-state area. Um, and it's supposed to get, I think, up to 60 tomorrow. That's amazing for this time of year. But then next week, it's going to drop back down to the 30s. And I think we may even have snow on Monday, is what I heard. Um so, like I say, Milano, you keep a spot for me down in Miami. I was looking at my, my calendar uh, for my work uh, projects. I may get some time off in February. If I get some time off in February, I'm probably going to head back down to Florida for a little bit. Glam Gypsy's on a check-in. Atlanta's in the building. Hey, everyone. Great topic, Sam. Uh, on time. And she gave the smiley emoji. Glam Gypsy, thank you for sharing that. That's encouragement to me. Uh, I appreciate you, Glam Gypsy. I hope you're doing good in um, Atlanta. I actually Googled Atlanta today uh, on Google Maps. Why did I do that? Uh, different um, uh, different personal reasons on just looking uh, in that area. But I didn't realize how far on the on the map, if you Google Map Atlanta, I didn't realize how far in how far inland Atlanta is compared to Savannah, Georgia. So when I drive down I-95 uh, from the New York area all the way down to Florida, I drive down just pretty much I-95 straight. And like when I go through Georgia and I pass by Savannah, I didn't realize Atlanta was, it's really far in. Like you got to really, it's like a couple hour drive in from uh, I-95. I didn't realize that. Sailing John. Yeah, I guess uh, I take a moment and briefly check out this Bob Wells. No, I guess I won't. Why? I got my own story. Amen. Amen, brother. That's right. You got your own story. Never forget that. Never let anyone, including me, uh, start to write your story. It's good to allow other people to inspire you, but never get, never allow someone to feed your spirit so much that you lose your own voice. I don't want to do that to you, and I don't want anyone to do that to you. Um, I remember um, when I when I got out when I left church, um, I started my own uh, nonprofit, and I, I had a radio program here in New Jersey, and. Uh, it was okay. It was. It was. I had it for. I had it for a few months. It was pretty good. I liked it. It was for me. 
But I do remember I, you know, somebody gave me some feedback. I mean, just like YouTube. Some people love you. Some people hate you. Somebody gave me some feedback. He's like, man, he sounds like, you know, just like the pastor that he left in in one uh, in one uh, radio show that I had in one uh, segment or whatever. And I listened to it. And I said, man, I really do. Um, so it's like, what's that a product of? That's a product of, you know, it's good to be under the mentorship of someone else. But you also have to realize that's for a season. Then you have to start to define your own voice. And like they always say, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. That's why a couple things are important. One is, who do you allow to speak into your life? Who do you allow to speak to your mind? And what's your standard? Because you're going to basically become that. And um, so there's nothing wrong with that. If you're pastor, if you're mentor, if you're YouTube guy, if you're, if you're mother, if you're whoever is inspiring you there's nothing wrong with that and there's nothing wrong if you even sound like a little bit like them but you never want to become them why because you want to be you that's my circle your uniqueness is a blend of like my man chris said i believe is that you take a little bit from everyone but you have to put your own twist on it and you have to be uniquely you that is your biggest strength and you don't want to lose that in the mix of somebody else's story uh, Milano, I haven't watched that video. You yeah, check it out. I mean, it was him and another uh, o older lady, or not older lady, but just lady, whatever. And uh, <clears throat> that's what she was like the administrator. Cause like what happened was he was doing the RTR, and like because it got bigger this year, a lot of the BLM, the government uh, rangers, started putting pressure on him. Like now you got to pull out permits, you got to organize and structure this thing properly. I told you all that was gonna happen. If you look at my videos from a few months back when he announced it. And uh, so what happened was he needed actual an event planner. So this woman that he knew used to be like an executive assistant. She started to plan it with the BLM officials and the Rangers. She's doing all the planning. So he was like, thank God for her because without her, I wouldn't be able to do it. And she said, when you speak to her, because a lot of people were disrespecting her, like at RTR, they were like telling her like, who are you? Like, you know, this is Bob's event. This isn't you. And, um, and that's why, that's why he made that statement that, listen, when you speak to her, you're speaking to me. So Milano, when you speak to Milano, you're speaking to me. Like, yeah, that's my representative. You know, just like in a playful way, I showed up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, check it out. I mean, if you're into the nomad life, if you're not into nomad life, you could be like, what the hell is this guy in the middle of nowhere? Saying? I, I don't know if that was his video or another one where he was like, we're at the RTR, look behind us. And it was like nothing but like raw desert land. I was like, oh, shit. I mean, what? there's like nothing going on there. But people get into that. And there's no judgment. I know respect and love to my man, American writer. He's from Arizona. Everyone gets in, and my one of my um, person people that inspired me, the Ultimate Warrior. He lived in uh, Arizona, and so you know it's all relative. Um, let me go back to some comments. Jazz, you can call me Jazz. Everyone does. All right, thank you, Jazz. I appreciate that. Love and respect to your full name, though, too. Uh, Jacinder Sai. I'm gonna try to pronounce it. I hope that was right, but if not. It's love and respect. So we're going to call you Jazz. Uh, I just moved to Totowa. Uh, I lived in uh, Lodi. Okay, I know Lodi. I actually, Lodi was right off Route 46 in New Jersey. How do I know Lodi? When I had first, uh, when I was young and I had my first uh, nice car, uh, Acura Legend, I went to look at uh, rims. I was going to buy like chrome rims in Lodi. They had a lot of car shops off uh, Route 46. That's what made me think of Lodi. So she goes, I quit my, she quit her job after 14 years. Well, that's a long time. I give you credit to go back to school full time for TV production. Well, one is that's a long time to be at a job. 14 years. They say the average person in today's society only stays with their company for approximately four and a half years. Now, it's funny you say that you go back to school because I just watched a bunch of YouTube clips with like Mark Cuban and other entrepreneurs that said college degree is basically a uh, useless, um, I tend to agree with that, in my opinion. I believe in certifications and certain amount of degrees, but nowadays with technology, to you know, I mean, you need it for certain things, but the return on investment is getting worse and worse, and the amount of debt you have to go in to get a degree, the amount of time you waste out of your life, it, it won't pay off. I mean, TV production, everything like that. I mean, a lot you're just better off starting a YouTube channel than going live, in my opinion. Uh, but that's my opinion. I want you to follow your dream. I don't want to speak negatively to your dream. Um, but I'm just sharing what I was just recently watching in my opinion on overall college. Am I against college? No. 
Uh, should you do it if you want to do it? Yes, because it's all about how you want to define your life. But what I'm saying is just be careful on the amount of debt you're going to take out to go to college. Because what I found is a lot of times people become professional students. And who's teaching professional students? Professional teachers. You know, these people are, have been out of the workforce for a long period of time. And they kind of like get off on like just being in class. And that shit goes on for like years. And then they get one degree and then they want another degree. And then before you know it, they wasted 10 years out of their life. And what do they think they're going to do now? They're going to go re-engage the workforce and become like... Then you, you know, it's like, it's, I don't know. I am, my opinion, this is my opinion. I am a little bit against formal education, especially over an extended period of time for an extended amount of money. In today's technology era, I believe if you're relatively smart, most of your knowledge will come from self-education. Uh, I would watch various videos on YouTube on becoming a TV producer. Uh, I believe you probably get just as much well-informed if you put the effort into it. And, uh, and I would get an internship or whatever it. I mean, well, one is TV's dying. So that's another thing that puts up a red flag. I'm being honest with you, Jazz. It's love and respect to you. TV's dying. I mean, TV is a dead platform. Uh, I, you know, Obviously, every, all, all content is going through the internet. I mean, how many people still have, how many people still have their uh, cable TV? Even when I had a house for the last couple of years, I cut the cord. I just, I just had uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, and I, you know, watch YouTube or watch Netflix. I mean... So everybody now, I mean, I don't in 10 years, I don't think TV will be around in a certain way. Now, you're always going to have a need for content. So that's the counter argument that there's always going to need to be a, for content. So there'll always be a need for somewhat producers. But that those amount of jobs are very small. Um, and you just have to be careful on how much time and how much money you're going to put into getting a degree. Uh, that's my thought process on that. Thank you for sharing, Jazz. Love and respect to you. Milano, Sam, they close in... 63 Sam Clubs. Well, I'm not mad at that. Um, now, what's a Sam Club? Sam Club is like a wholesale. Sam, Sam's Club is a wholesale store that sells in bulk. Uh, so I am against that in general speaking terms. Why? Because on average, buying in bulk leads to waste and overeating. Costco, Sam's Club, they're all the same. Buying in bulk leads to waste and overeating. So uh, I'm not mad at 63 Sam's Clubs for closing because I think it's better off for most people. Um, that would be my thoughts on that. Thank you for sharing that, Milano. I didn't know that. Uh, let me go back to some comments. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little bit behind on the comments. Thank you for the comments. Milano, what do you do with $11 an hour? Nothing. And that's probably, that's without health care. I mean, again, if you were going to pass corporate tax reform, minimum wage should be $15, $20 an hour and get, and get health care off the backs of business. The number one problem with businesses, and I had a small business, is health care for you and for your employees. If the government covered that, you would have more innovation. You would have more innovation. You, have, you would have more freedom uh, to be more creative, to do more things with your business, to take more risks. Um, so $11 an hour with no benefits and corporations got billions in tax cuts, poor negotiation, in my opinion. Uh, Glam Gypsy, uh, four years, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, four hours, yes. Uh, oh, yes, he was talking about, I'm sorry, because I'm a little bit behind on comments. Glam Gypsy was talking about when I was saying how far that Atlanta is from off I-95. So thank you, Glam, for telling me the time. So it's four hours, basically, from... I-95, which is the major highway in America that runs all up and down the east coast of America. It's about four hours inland, Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia has really become um, a great place for economic growth. A lot of job opportunity uh, and a lot of diverse industry, technology, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, from what I've seen, I, I, I haven't spent... Uh, much if any time there so glam you would know better than me glam gypsy how would you say the economy is in atlanta right now i know overall the economy in the united states is doing well and globally but i see a lot of uh, economic growth from what i see on my level in atlanta would you agree milano can you pay rent question mark when well, eleven dollars an hour you can't you know what's a, let's let me do the math i mean well what's ten dollars an hour ten dollars an hour times 40 is 400 400 times 4, if you had 4 weeks in a month, that's what, 1,600? You know, take away 20% of that. 
you know, what do you what do you got? You know, this mine's three thirteen hundred dollars. So if you made ten dollars an hour and you work forty hours a week, you take home thirteen hundred dollars a month. Thirteen hundred dollars a month, and you don't have any health insurance with that. On average, the average person that gets paid ten to eleven dollars, they don't get any health care. Uh, so thirteen hundred dollars, you're gonna need to spend at least five hundred dollars of that in health care to buy to get coverage if you're a single person. Uh, and if you think you don't need health care, you've never been hurt. You've never, God forbid, gotten a car accident. You never had a back problem. You never had children. Uh, you know, God forbid. I mean, anything can happen. So you need health care coverage, at least catastrophic. And uh, so, you know, let's just say you got health care on the super cheap. You got it through uh, the government-run Affordable Care Act. And you got subsidized, which, you know, is trying to be taken apart as we speak under the administration. Let's say you got health care for $300. You're left with $1,000. Do you have a car payment? You know what the average car payment in America is right now? Five hundred dollars a month. So, but let's say you're not. So, let's say your, your car payment is only two hundred fifty dollars a month. Okay. So now you're left with seven hundred fifty dollars. Can you rent anything uh, in a decent area for seven hundred fifty dollars? Not that. Let's let's say somehow you you found the best deal in the world. You got rent for five hundred dollars a month. So now you're left with two hundred fifty dollars. You haven't paid any utility bills. You haven't ate. You haven't put gas in your car. You haven't paid for a cell phone bill. You haven't done anything else. You can't live off uh, $11 an hour. You, you, there's no way. It's impossible. Uh, and I, I just gave you unfair metrics. There's no way you're going to find rent for $500 a month in a decent, even a remotely decent area. There's no way you're going to find health insurance for $300 a month. I mean, and it, you know, it's just a lot of, uh, it's not fair for someone who's willing to work. I mean, you know, again, you should be able to get a livable wage and then work your way up. But the bottom should be you're at a livable wage, not, you know, destitute. Uh, and that's why many people say, oh, fuck it, I'm not going to work. I mean, those people, they're not right either. I mean, I can never agree with somebody who says that. But the system is such set up that where it's like people, it's like, fuck it. They're just going to live off the system because what does it make sense? You know, but that's not the answer either. And that's a wrong mindset. And I rebuke that. But what I'm just trying to say is, look, bottom line is for people such that I know my mother or whoever else that's willing to work in a supermarket or Walmart or whatever, you should be able to live a relatively decent livable life and then work your way up from there. But not everybody's going to be an entrepreneur. Not everyone's going to be a CEO. Not everyone's going to be a manager. I mean, there's a reason, you know, for every 20 people, there's one manager. You understand what I'm saying? Like if everyone was a leader, then there'd be nobody, you know, the majority of people are followers, and there's that's not a negative thing, but that's just the way the world is. So you can't make sure that, you have to make sure that not only the leader gets paid well, but that the people that are following that, that are under that person's management, that they're going to pay a decent livable wage. Everyone is not going to be a Mark Cuban. Everyone is not going to be an Oprah Winfrey. Everyone is not going to be a Bill Gates. There's going to be, the vast majority are just going to be average people working to the best of their ability, and they're, they're workers, they're followers. Does that mean they're evil? Does that mean they're stupid? No, it's just that that's the way this world is, and you have to make sure that those people who aren't maybe the, you know, that they're, they're living a decent life for being workers, I mean, in my opinion. <clears throat> Pack live. Okay, Sam, sunglass emoji. I need a position too, laugh out loud. Uh, it's good to laugh. Any openings? Uh, currently at, at my facility, no, and in my... Uh, in my corporation, yes. Uh, in the technology field that I work in, yes. Um, it's all, um, yeah, there is. I mean, I see job openings. Um, overall, yeah, there is. I mean, uh, for somebody um, interested in the technology field, there's openings. Uh, but it's all a matter of, what I've learned in life is, Live below your means and then try to find something that somewhat you have a little bit of passion in and that, you know, you, you want to be paid somewhat well, but that you find, you know, good people to work with. Uh, that's a tough thing to do, but my, my always answer, because it's so hard to say to a group of people because we're all individuals, like Jazz wants to be a TV production, et cetera, et cetera. I, my general rule with regards to financial health, I know this video started talking about mental health, but with financial health is just live below your means. And then you have to figure out your life from there. And uh, in general speaking terms, the best website to find job openings is Indeed, Indeed, I-N-D-E-E-D.com, Indeed.com. 
to me, that's the best uh, platform to look at openings for job positions if you are interested in a job market. Um, Salem John, Big World, uh, a lot of different places, pretty, um, and then sunglass emojis. Yes, I agree with that. The world, the world is so big, but yet it's so small. Uh, now, I don't like to fly, but I've been on an airplane before several times. And what you realize that when you fly is how small we really are in the big scheme of this entire, not only world, but universe. If you're ever, uh, if you ever go on an airplane, take a look out of the window at some point in the flight. And when you see you pass over Atlanta or you pass over New York City or you pass over wherever you are in the world, from that position up in the sky, as big as New York City is, as many people, as big as Atlanta is, or whatever you go over, it's so insignificant. It's little specks. And, you know, we're not only a global community, but in this universe, I mean, it's good to once in a while step outside of yourself and put life in perspective. Not to go down this mind bender of a dark hole and trying to figure out the universe but just to remember that don't put too much on your soul and don't don't forget to explore to look outside your 30 mile radius to see different things and to put them in context and in perspective Milano says Today at 2 p.m., it was like 30 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Well, amen, Milano. I like that. I miss, you know, when I was in Florida, I, you know, wearing my tank top, sweating, and going for a walk, listening to my music. That inspires me. Now, a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like to sweat and to be out in the sunshine. And the Florida sun is a little bit hotter. I mean, probably because you're close, closer to the equator, uh, if that matters. But it's just, it's a different type of heat in Florida. Um... But I enjoy that heat. Uh, some people don't. Some people like it cooler. But 80 degrees Fahrenheit, hot, is uh, I like that. I like a little bit of change of pace, but not too cold. Uh, Jazz says, I'm kind of regretting it going back to school now. You're so right. I'll be paying back student loans until I'm dead. Amen, Jazz. Well, thank you for sharing that as well. And again, Jazz, it's love and respect to you. Welcome. Yeah, just, just think about it. I want you to do whatever you want with your life. I don't want to control you. I don't want you to let anyone control you. But just think about it and just start doing whatever you want to do. When I started my electrical contracting business, I mean, uh, there's a certain certification I had to get with the state. There's certain tests I had to pass, et cetera, et cetera. But until then, what I do, I mean, I just work for other people. Uh, and I just, you know, and I started, you know, forming up my plans behind the scenes, but you know, whatever you want to do, dive in and then refine it as you go. You know, a lot of times in the corporate world, when a certain report is due, what management will say is just submit something. We can always refine it as we go. And that's a powerful lesson that I learned. And that's the only way to keep the ball going forward. John talked about moving forward. The only way you go forward is you just do it and refine it as you go. And a lot of times upper management says that because if people don't just submit something, people get stuck in this mindset of either trying to have everything perfect or everything 100%, and that's just not the way the world is. Now, certainly, I'm probably a little bit more lax than that. I don't have the mindset to do tedious things. Other people are stronger at that than me. Um, so I know my strengths. I know my weaknesses. So I give a lot of credit to people who put a lot of time into meticulous things. But what I'm trying to tell you is, if you want to do something, dive in and then refine it as you go. Period. Good good comment, Jazz. Uh, Edison E. Uh, and I just want to go back to Jazz's comment because it's a powerful thing that society faces. We talk about minimum wage. The biggest drivers of debt in today's society is student loans. Student loans in college is more is a corporation at this point. Colleges are more run like corporations than they are like nonprofit organizations. And even 
I've had a nonprofit organization. Even certain nonprofit organizations are run like corporations. They are corporations. You know, they're a nonprofit, but what's a nonprofit? A nonprofit means that after everyone's paid a salary in proportion to their mission statement, that the excess uh, capital, the excess revenues basically get reinvested into their mission statement. And there's not basically like dividends given to shareholders. In general speaking terms, that's kind of what a nonprofit is. So a nonprofit organization can make millions and millions and billions of dollars. The only thing that the nonprofit does, yes, it exempts them from certain taxes, but it just says that they have to reinvest that uh, excess money that they made into their mission statement, and their mission statement has to be centered around the betterment of society. Um, and a lot of times, even with that, a lot of people are, get, are getting overpaid in their, in their salary for that nonprofit. But that's what a lot of colleges are. Some are private, some are public. But a college says that we're, we're a nonprofit because we provide education to society. The problem with that is it's an oversell. What do you really learn in college? Not much practical things that you will need in your job. Not many. What you learn is, you know, you're basically just there to get a piece of paper to show that you have you have accomplished something and it does have some value, but it's not in proportion to the amount of money the average person is now spending. Uh, to spend $25,000 a year for four years minimum, uh, $100,000 uh, for four years, to get a return on that investment, it will take you probably another... 10 to 15 years and that's if you're diligent with watching your money not worth it you just wasted you know what 20 years out of your life just to get back to zero not worth it not worth it in my in my opinion on average i am not against higher education i am not belittling any i'm just saying you have to be very mindful because most people are struggling not with north korea most people are struggling with college loan debt so you always have to remember that was the average person struggling with in america it's health care costs and college loan debt. Edison Eagle, respect and love to South Edison. Do you know what the RTR stands for? Question mark. And have you ever seen any kind of similar gathering on the East Coast? The RTR stands for Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. Why does it stand for that? I mean, rubber, I guess, meaning like the rubber on a car, because these are all nomads who live out of their cars or RVs. Uh, tramp, I guess they, you know, people who travel like... They call people hobos or traveling tramps and a rendezvous, meaning like where everyone gets together and, and rendezvous. I've, I've never seen anything like that with regards to a nomad gathering on the East Coast, but that is the same thing as a gospel convention. That is the same thing as a summer jam concert. All it is, it's a concert. It's a gathering. It's a gospel fest. It's a, it's a um, trade show. Uh, you know, it's just a gathering of people either to sell you merchandise, sell you information, or it's free and it is for the promotion of something. Uh, the promotion of a lifestyle and even the promotion of a lifestyle is not really free. What, what they use that as, what they use the RTR is, it's a, it's a very slick marketing ploy. The RTR is used by the nomads that have YouTube channels to get content to then deliver to the public. How does Bob Wells make the majority of his income? Through his YouTube channel. How does he get YouTube videos? By seeking out other nomads and then interviewing their rigs. How do you get a lot of people together so you can take a lot of videos? By having a convention. You know, it's very slick, but, you know, this is all part of marketing. I mean, Bob Wells isn't stupid. In another life, he probably could have, you know, I mean, he's not stupid. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? So, most businesses center around how do you market it, how do you get content, and then how do you deliver and get the consumer to pay for that content. So that's in a slick roundabout way, even though they say it's for camping, they're using that as a resource to get content, to create videos, to get viewers to watch it. I mean, look about, we've talked about it for now, a portion of this video. So when I say RTR, when I say Bob Wells, now you're driven to go to his channel. So even though the event is free and it's like supposedly about love and peace, it's actually a very slick marketing ploy. The people who you think are dumb and naive in this world are very intelligent. And you have to be very mindful that everyone has motives. Do those motives have to be bad? No, because everyone has a motive. Just be mindful that everyone's selling you something. That's why I don't remember the, the comment, so please forgive me. But someone said, I think it was John. Somebody says, yeah, John said, I'm, I'm writing my own story. 
So follow, listen to others, watch others, get inspiration, but define your own life and write your own story. That's very important. Uh, good question, Edison Eagle. Sailing John. Yeah, I have an amplified antenna. It was cheap. Get all the TV channels I need for free. Yeah, we were. that was probably in regards to talking about how TV uh, as a uh, way of media platform is basically dead. Yeah, John lives full-time out of his boat in New Jersey, soon to be in uh, Florida. And, uh, yeah, so he, he cut the cord. He just has a TV antenna. He probably watches most of his content on YouTube. That's where I get all my content from. Or, like, if I'm, you know, if I'm in a um, cafe or something, I'll... But TV is garbage. Uh, you know, there's not much on TV. So, you know, the content on there, even there, is garbage. Jazz. I have a love for documentary. I love documentaries. That's what led me to this channel. Oh, really? Thank you. I hope to produce a documentary for HBO or Netflix one day. Well, there you go. Well, one is uh, respect and love to that passion. Because I think documentaries are probably one of the best... One of, for me, one of the most inspiring ways to deliver a meaningful message. I love documentaries. Learn a lot from... All a documentary is is a biography in a video platform. And biographies, to me, are the best way to learn something from someone else's life. Actually, Bob Wells, that's how he started. He started with his... He was filmed on a documentary called, I think, uh, Outward Bound or something like that. And I remember I had a viewer in here... Uh, from Arizona, um, what was her name, what is her name, uh, I lost track of thought, Moon Dancer, and that, she had recommended that, and, uh, well, Jazz, I want to say that I believe in you, believe in yourself, and dive in, and refine as you go, you don't need any degree to dive in, start a YouTube channel, Jazz, label it Jazz Productions, or whatever you want, and just start filming shit, Go into Lowe's, Home Depot, and just film people picking up fucking, uh, you know, plywood. I mean, do I, I made one of my earliest videos was, how do you start? You just fucking hit record on your, on your camera. And just say anything and fucking upload that. Starting is the hardest process of anything in life, and that's what I say. Like you know, people want to talk about people like to mind masturbate to where they're going to go when they travel. And what I say is just throw your shit in a car and just head south. I mean, figure it out as you go. The first time and the first, in the beginning, it's going to be hard as hell. You're going to fuck up. You're going to fail. But there, that's the thing a college degree doesn't teach you. Part of success is like a couple years of just fucking up and figuring it out. And you never fully figure it out. And once you think you figured it out, something hits you in the face. But you get better over time. Experience through trial and error. And through putting yourself out there. Nothing will help you learn like putting yourself out there, screwing up, and then not giving up. Amen. Renee, the loving Renee. Work was crazy busy today. New projects, new year. Fun times. I am blessed. Amen. With the laugh up emoji. I speak positivity into my life. Amen, Renee. I love Renee's positivity. And others. Yes, you have spoke positivity in my life and I thank you for that. And I don't expect anyone else to. Well, I give you a lot of respect for that. That's the way to have a healthy mindset. But I am thankful to those when they do. Smile emoji. Renee, I speak blessings, grace, and favor. Now, I don't speak favor in a way of like religious prosperity favor. I speak favor where people give you extra opportunity. And why do I speak favor that people give you extra opportunity? Because you have a healthy mindset that has your priorities and orders. Doesn't mean I think you're perfect. I don't think anyone's perfect. But I want people to give you an opportunity to go even further than you thought you could be. So I speak that into your life and I thank you for being a positive voice. My man Milano. Also, uh, the 14-day rule. Yes, Milano's speaking about the 14-day rule. The 14-day rule is that in many campgrounds, doesn't matter if it's in Arizona or whatever. When I was in Florida, I went to a campground. And the basic rule for state parks or national parks is if they allow camping, the longest consistent, oh, I'm sorry, the longest consecutive period of time you can camp on their ground is for 14 consecutive days. After 14 
consecutive days of camping, whether that park charges you a fee or whether it's free, you have to leave that park for a certain period of time and then you can come back after a certain period of time. But no park, state park or national park, for for 99% for of them, there may be some exceptions, but for 99% of them, no park or l government land area allows you to stay there past 14 consecutive days without moving for a period of time. So that's what Milano means. I learned that too as, in my nomad journeys. <laughs> Excuse me one second, guys. Um... And Milano says, holy crap, uh, Milano. Christopher, being self-employed is the way to go. You could be your own boss and make your dreams come true. Or you can work for a boss and make their dreams come true. Well, Christopher, thank you for the comment, brother. Thank you for hanging in here with me. I somewhat agree and I somewhat don't. I have my own business and I work for other businesses. Not everyone is meant to be self-employed. Not everyone... You know, again, if everyone was meant to be self-employed, you'd have no workers. If, if you had no workers, the world wouldn't turn. So you have to remember to step out of your perspective. And you have to remember that the majority of people will never want nor have the capacity to be self-employed. Does that mean they're less intelligent or less gifted than anyone else? No, we're all different, uniquely so. And so self-employed also has a huge amount of risk and negative. I have my own businesses for several years. And what I can tell you is you can't guarantee any amount of money every month or any every week. And for some people, they, there's no way they can handle that. And they don't want to handle that. That's not their drive and they're not their passion. And so again, there is no one size fits all. Some people are meant to be self-employed. Some people are meant to be entrepreneurs. And some people are meant to be positive, productive workers that help entrepreneurs. But you need both. The employee needs the employer, and the employer needs the employee, and both should be respected and compensated appropriately, and, and I've learned that over the course of my life and experiencing these different things. Um, there's blessings to both. There's negatives to both. Uh, so what's the answer? The answer is the key to all good decisions is knowing yourself. How do you know yourself? By trying different things, refining as you go, and that never stops. Good comment, Chris. Thank you, brother. Pack Live. Uh, no, as you're representing uh, you, your YouTube channel, opening position. Oh, I got what you're saying. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm leaving the comment. Yeah, that's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek to Milano. Uh, yeah, I got some openings on my YouTube channel. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I would like to do... Uh, I would like to do down the road. I would like to do more like a type of interview things and bring other people onto the uh, platform to have them share, but... You know, I'm not around that many people too many times. And a lot of times when I do run into people in my travels or whatever, and I, and I try to keep this away from my business, but I ask them, do, can I interview you? And that's how I was starting this one part of the conversation in this live feed. A lot of times people don't want to go on camera. They don't want to share their life. And when they do share their life and I interview them, it's like, and I understand because I used to be like that. It's not like authentic, like a lot of times, and not even me, I've got to watch myself. Sometimes I look back on the video and say, man, that video was shit. A lot of times when you put the camera on, people give you the answer that's conventional wisdom and that they are expected to say. A lot of times when the camera's off, people talk genuinely and it's free-flowing. So there's just a dynamic there that when you put people in front of a camera, they act different. And even myself, sometimes, like I said, I watch my own videos, ah, that was a bad one. That's why, like, man, at one point, I probably like to just get up. I mean, I was thinking about it, but I still haven't fully... I just get like a GoPro and keep it on me and like film because some of the best content that I have is just like conversations I have with people on my travels and um, because it's organic like when you put a camera in somebody that conversation is totally different and it's hard to capture that authenticity when you do that you know what I mean so it's it's a balance um, Gilbert evening all Sam Sam the man, two peace up emojis. Gilbert, peace and love to you. Blessing. Keep going forward, Gilbert. Keep going forward. And uh, thank you for joining. Give you confidence to you and uh, blessings to you, Gilbert. Good to see you, brother. Milano, special high school education is the way to go. Um, yeah, I mean, look, obviously, you know, you need some certifications in life. You need to be able to complete certain things. And the vast majority of people may even be structured for a school system. But, again, it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's not you should go to school or you shouldn't. 
It's just that everyone should evaluate how much schooling plays to your strengths. What are you going for? How much money are you going to have to go into debt with that school? And what's your return on investment? So again, I can't give you a one answer for all. Some people say just go to trade schools, but not everybody's meant to be part of a trade. I mean, there's no one answer. The answer is live below your means, number one. Number two, always be mindful of you're exchanging your time for something. So how much time do you have to spend on this thing and how much uh, are you going to have to spend for it to get the reward of a certificate or whatever? And a lot of times it isn't worth it. But sometimes it is. It's, it's relative to your individual life. Milano, FM stations are shutting down. Uh, what's FM? I don't know what that stands for. I'll probably know as soon as you tell me. Uh, no man's land. There is no greater teacher than experience. Amen, brother. School is just a theory. I agree with that. Now, to be fair, we need some theory. We need some level of uh, theory. Uh, but I believe the majority of wisdom is found in experience and self-education. Uh, but I do believe, you know, it's a balance of things. Uh, but good point, no man's land. Good point, brother. Selling John, agree, learn a trade. Oh, and that goes to my point. Some people are meant to learn a trade and some people aren't. Uh, I think trade is good for a lot of people. I think you're always, in some extent, until robots would completely take over, you always got a need for electricians, plumbers, carpenters. Um, but also, not everyone's meant to do that. Everyone's different. So, uh, try. I know plenty of people that got into the trades and said, this shit ain't for me. And they did something else. So, again, some of it is just like trial and error. Uh, and don't overinvest in anything until you kind of figure out yourself. And it takes years and years of adulthood to figure out yourself. You don't know yourself at 20. You don't know yourself at 25. That's why I say, I mean, we're in a very bad system where you graduate high school at 18 and you ask an 18, 19 year old kid to go into debt for a hundred thousand dollars plus to get a college degree that they don't even know what they want to do in life yet. Your mind isn't fully even mature yet. So it's just a bad system in many instances. Um, But, you know, everyone has to experience for themselves. Uh, Milano says, can we send Donald and Melania Trump with $11 an hour and see if they can survive? Laugh out loud. Amen. I agree with that. And they can, they wouldn't. And that's why he doesn't have any passion. Uh, he grew up rich, uh, wealthy. I mean, um, you know, borrowed money from his father. Nothing wrong with all that. And he shouldn't be shamed for that. But... He doesn't understand. I mean, that's why, I mean, to allow, to give all those corporate tax cuts and then not to tie to any type of regulation to increase minimum wage, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't, I always say I like Donald Trump in certain aspects, but what I don't like him of, he doesn't, he doesn't have a broad perspective. His perspective is very narrow to his world and to his insights. And so he has no perspective on the, con yes, tax cuts, where I agree with tax cuts is they will encourage business to have more money to risk and to invest and to spend. But if you give billions and billions of dollars of tax cut, which 15% of a billion dollar, you know, and you don't tie that to any, like, you know, all companies have to minimum $15 an hour with health benefits, then it's not, you know, that's what's going to happen. So now they do a show and dance on a TV show on, you know, Donald Trump will get up there and see because of the tax cuts, uh, Walmart just raised their minimum wage to $11. And he has no concept. That doesn't mean shit. You still can't do anything with eleven dollars. You know that. And but you'll never understand. And that's why I say I understand. I make. I'm blessed where I make good money now. But I work. I once worked for minimum wage when I had a house, and I, I basically almost got foreclosed on. I was working. I never quit and gave up and just sat on my ass. I was working two, three jobs, and I could barely pay my bills. Uh, now certainly I had to downsize my life, but when I, you know. You look, like I said, you look at any apartment. I mean, can you rent any apartment for under $1,000 in a decent area? Not in a populated area, maybe in the middle of the country. But in the middle of the country, there's no job opportunity. You have to be in somewhat of a city area to get a job. And you ain't going to get an apartment in most places for anything under 1000 I mean, that's my experience. <clears throat> um, May West. Never thought about the marketing aspect. It seems like an RVR nomad Woodstock. Well, that's what it is. And even Woodstock was a marketing advertisement for all the, uh, I mean, all the different, uh, 
I mean, that's what Woodstock was. It was a concert. Uh, Woodstock was uh, basically used, you know, by the, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, it may have been the Beatles, but it was different musicians of that time that were making millions off their records, and Woodstock encapsulates that lifestyle of hippie, of free spirit, and it was all engulfed in that. And that's the problem with the tribe mentality. The Woodstock was basically just sex, drugs, and music. You know, RTR is basically camping, beer, and P.O. Box. And, and YouTube video content. Everything, you trace everything back to a level of money and self-interest. Nothing wrong with that. Even the Gospel Fest. Like, you know, when T.D. Jakes used to have that, you know... They would bring, like, uh, Yolanda Adams and all that shit. What, all that shit is pumped around. They After they used to do the Gospel Fest, they would put out DVDs. They would do, like, you know, collections. They would pay Yolanda Adams thousands of dollars. They would pay Paula White thousands of dollars to be the guest speaker and everything else. You know, there was money, and there was so much revenue brought in from the people coming into town to be part of that gospel conference, that that was a huge business. You know, they weren't doing that thing to spread the, the gospel. They were doing that thing preaching to the choir. People who already knew the Lord were going there for a pep rally. Tony Robbins, he goes, you know, and he does these platforms, all these people are going there. And it's just to get a high of the moment on average. Sure, there may be a couple people that get touched. But for me, on average, everything is a marketing ploy. Everything. Um, everything is a play to your emotions. You have to be very careful. That's why I understand the pack mentality where some people feel they need that to survive. But the pack mentality, the tribe mentality is very dangerous because usually the person who's leading the tribe, uh, is a manipulator or has, or knows how to manipulate human emotions. Look, the bottom line is you can't be a leader without knowing how to influence people. And once you know how to influence people, it's a very hairy line on once you realize that you can get people to do what you want, once you realize that you can get 2,000 people to go in the middle of a desert in the winter and, you know, camp and talk about a P.O. box, once you realize you can get people to do that, you can get people to donate to your Patreon account, you can get people to buy stickers, you can get people to do a lot of things because you've bought, you. they have emotions invested in your sales pitch. They're invested. Why do people get, you know, people are invested in certain pastors. People are invested in certain entertainers. And they give to them to a certain level. And they forget to write their own story. Like my brother John said. Very dangerous. I'm not against a group mentality. I am not against teamwork. But you always have to remember to think for yourself. <clears throat> Milano. I will change Don $11 hour survival. I would challenge Donald for $11 hour survival. Oh, Donald will never survive on $11 hour. Like I said, Donald talks tough to Donald Trump. I mean, to uh, Rosie O'Donnell and to North Korea. If, if Donald Trump was in the street without his bodyguards and all that, do you think he would talk as tough? Talk, talk, uh, talk, uh, do you think he would talk as tough as he does? Hell no. Because any time anybody who spent time in the street, when you talk tough like that, I mean, your time is limited. Because you realize that, you know, and you show. So he, he talks tough, but he even, he knows he talks tough just for, to get people to move. Like he says, well, now North Korea is talking to South Korea, but they're only doing that because I talk tough to them. The problem is when you talk tough consistently, now once in a while you have to light a fire under people. That's where I agree with Trump, that he has that ability. The, where I disagree with him is that he stays there. He doesn't ever pull back. The problem is, is that eventually someone calls your bluff. Someone says, you know what? You want to talk tough? You want to go to war? Let's do it. Because someone, you know, there's always someone who has less to lose than you. And most people do. And eventually someone says, I don't give a fuck. Let's do it. And then, then you got to back your shit up with reckless actions. And if, we, if he has to back his shit up, do you think the regular person, you know, he'll be behind his golden palace. He's not 100% wrong, but he was wrong with that negotiation with the tax uh, reform. Uh, corporations got a huge tax cut and the regular people got shit. They may th see $1,000 extra a year in their salary. Um, and the minimum wage didn't go up and health care got pushed back because he repealed uh, that the fact that everyone had to be mandated to have health care. He repealed that provision in the law. Affordable Care Act is still in place, but that was a huge step back, in my opinion. Some people disagree with me on that, and that's, it is what it is. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, Donald Trump, what is $11 an hour do? Uh, that allows him to pay his workers at Mar-a-Lago to feed him uh, and his friends uh, caviar. I mean, have you ever seen... Milano, you're in Miami. I, I visited Mar-a-Lago Mar when I was uh, down in Palm Beach. If you ever been there, I mean, it's a huge thing right off the Atlantic Ocean. It's a huge resort, uh, which they call like the Southern White House. The workers that he ships in from uh, overseas, they pay them basically minimum wage to feed and to clean after him and his friends. And uh, he doesn't understand reality. You know, go look at Ivanka Trump's Instagram. Go look at Donald Trump Jr.'s Instagram. Uh, they don't have a, really a reality of common day struggle. That being said, um, you know, there's also a lot of people in Hollywood that pander to the average person and they live in their golden palaces too. And they're big time Democrats. So I got to balance myself and say, look, you know, government is not just the answer either. So I will not preach that, you know, it's a balance of thought and it's a balance of thought. It's a balance of thought. I'll just leave it at that. No man's land. Buy a camera and begin filming. Yeah, and I would even uh, better that. Don't even buy a camera. Use your phone. Use your phone that you're watching me on. Hit record and start there. You know, most phone cameras have higher resolutions than most cameras had five years ago. And they have editing software. You don't need a laptop. You don't need a, you don't need a GoPro to start. All you need is your cell phone. Hit record. Sailing John. Yeah, and hold the phone the right way. Yes, not like me. Laugh out loud, but it will get better. Sailing John. Amen. Anybody who's interested in watching Sailing John living full-time out of his boat, uh, click his profile picture and subscribe to his channel, please, if you want to. Now, yes, what Selling John is talking about, when you shoot YouTube video, I made that mistake myself, and that's what I'm saying. Part of life is experience. When you shoot a YouTube video, you can't keep your phone um, vertically, meaning that, you know, how you normally hold your phone, you have to hold it horizontally. If you don't hold it horizontally, the video, when you shoot a regular video, it doesn't come in full screen. If you shoot it ver vertically, how you normally hold a phone when you take a selfie, then it will it will have it will be like a cut off on the sides. It will be like outlined in black on the sides, and the video will not be full screen. So if you ever start a YouTube channel, you have to hold your camera phone vertically, shoot the video, and then that's the only way when you upload it, it comes in full screen. I made that mistake myself in the beginning. Just before dawn, another uh, Atlanta, Georgia, or Georgia resident in the building. Greetings, everyone. Greetings and blessings to you. Just before dawn, thank you for joining, brother. Milano, now you have to push your car, laugh out loud, God bless, <laughs> Milano, Renee, thanks Sam, uh, smiley face, nope, not perfect, none of us are, but always striving for it, amen, I receive your favor, amen, mistakes can be valuable, that's right, learning tool, they're a valuable learning tool, amen Renee, I just don't keep making the same ones, second time around can be worse, well, now, only thing I'll add to that final statement is sometimes I've made the same mistake not only twice, but several times. Just like my girl Rihanna said in one of my favorite songs on the, um, on the Anti album is uh, Same Old Mistakes. I remember walking around Central Park uh, when that first came out for like weeks listening to that. Sometimes we make the same old mistakes. And sometimes we have to go through the same mistakes several times, experience a certain amount of pain, realize that this isn't the way to do it and we have to make a little bit of a correction and we have to have a little bit and we have to have God's grace we need God's grace and uh, so I want to encourage you even if you made the same mistake several times you fall the godly may fall seven times but they will get up again if you fall seven times you stand up eight praise the Lord selling John I'm going to get the drone thing and get some overhead views and think it would be awesome. I Well, yeah, I'm not a drone guy. I like the artistic aspect of a different angle. Like I was talking about with being in an airplane, it gives you a different perspective on uh, life. Uh, I do think, as someone who John is living full-time out of your boat, I think a drone may be very good to give you that different angle. Uh, obviously, you got to be careful. If you're going to launch that off your boat, you don't want that uh, drone to end up in the ocean. Uh 
but they're, they're cheap now. I think I saw a couple drones in Walmart uh, for under $100. Now, I don't know how good they are, and you probably have to mount some type of uh, GoPro or some type of camera to them so you get some footage. But, uh, yeah, you can do that for cheap now. Drones are uh, more and more becoming uh, more inexpensive. Milano says, I like that, Sailing John. So I'm talking about jazz. The main reason I decided to go back to school was mainly to make a connections to make connections in the TV industry, which I've done. So that's a plus. Well, I'm actually surprised because I don't, I wouldn't think you would meet a lot of people in college that are in the TV industry. What I think you would meet in college is a lot of people that want to be in the TV TV industry that talk about being in the industry. In my opinion, in my experience, the only way to meet people in the industry you want to work is by working in that industry for me college and that whole that whole world is just a bunch of people just preparing for the real world but there's nothing like getting in the real world now that's my opinion my perspective i'm not against college but i'm trying to say you gotta be very careful because a lot of people try to like mind masturbate life and they love theory but they don't like the actual experience of life and so you just gotta be careful you know who are you meeting in the TV industry? These people have jobs in the TV industry. Uh, do they make a living in the TV industry? Or, like what I've met a lot of times is, a lot of times people like to act like they're professors. And they like to try to act like, you know, most people exaggerate, period. And um, you just got to be careful. You just got to be careful. But again, I'm a supporter of you, Jazz. And um, I just want to encourage you. But I want to encourage you to be yourself. I want, Like my circle says, be you. I want to encourage you to be Jazz, Jen Cinder Sai, if I'm saying that right, your full name respectfully. And I want to encourage you to use the resources you currently have, your phone, a GoPro camera, or anything else. And I want you to go out to the world today, tomorrow, this weekend, and go shoot film. Go shoot people sitting in Starbucks. Go shoot the cars do a time lapse of the cars going past your street edit that thing up this weekend and upload your first video because that's the only way to learn in life in my opinion and i want you to be the best you i want you to be inspired to be you not to be your professor not to be your me anybody else be you praise the lord chris hey sam i have a youtube channel i haven't had the courage to do a live show yet any tips did it come natural to you or is it something you had to work on? Well, one is love and respect to Chris and anybody who wants to check out Chris's YouTube channel. I got no problem with self-promotion as long as it's a positive thing. I don't know his channel, so I, I can't say yes or no on it. But I want to show respect and love to anybody who wants to do their own thing. I encourage people to do their own thing. I want people to do. I want people to be themselves. So uh, two pieces of advice I would give you, Chris, based on my experience. One is you need at least 100 subscribers to go live. I was working with Sailing John uh, to try to encourage him to get more subscribers, and Sailing John just got 100 subscribers. So if you don't have 100, 100 subscribers, you can't go live. YouTube doesn't give you the feature. So the next is, if you do have 100 subscribers and you can go live, what would be my recommendation? Um, talk about subjects that you're passionate about. Don't focus on who joins the chat room. Initially, your first couple of live feeds, nobody may join the chat room. Um, and so you have to focus on just having a conversation with yourself. And then I try not to go, I try to pick the first 15, 20 minutes to talk about a structured topic. Then after that, if people join the live feed, then I have live dialogue like we're doing now, because the live feed is meant to not only to speak on a subject that you're passionate about, but it's also meant to connect with others and to have dialogue in a community uh, setting. Uh, but that takes time. And in the beginning, if you have no one that joins, just say whatever you feel is saying. Don't let the live feed extend too long because it's going to get negative. And obviously, if someone comes in on disrespectful or messes up your vibe, you just have to block them. Uh, and like everything else, the last piece of advice would be the only way to get better at it is to hit record or hit live and go live and refine as you go. Like I was watching out my live feed yesterday, today at work. And I said, man, I sucked last night. I didn't like how I... I didn't like how the vibe was for me. I felt disappointed. But I felt that in different videos. And some people said, look, I love that live feed you did. So the only way to have a YouTube channel is you have to have a level of self-confidence. You have to be willing to put yourself out there. 
And you just have to upload and refine as you go. That's my opinion. And I wish you love, success, and blessings. I want you to be successful, Chris. And uh, I'll check you out, brother. And uh, keep pushing forward. Gilbert, I find I am really just learning myself at 54. Wish I had followed my dreams when I was younger. But that is done now. And is now from here and beyond. Well, Gilbert, that's a powerful comment. I'm going to read that again because I believe that anyone who's interested in going forward in life would be wise to listen to Gilbert's com comment. Gilbert says, I find I'm really just learning myself at 54 years of age. Do you think you just, you think you know yourself at 18? Do you think you know yourself at 28, 32? You think you know yourself well enough to take out $100,000 worth of college loans to do it? I mean, Gilbert says he's just learning himself at 54. Wish I had followed my dreams when I was younger. I'm going to continue. The lady I met last week, 69, told me the same thing. She asked me if I lived out of my car. She said she thought about it, but she's too old. She has health problems. She said, I wish I would have started younger. Two powerful things just so far in Gilbert's comment. One is at 54, he's just learning himself. Learning yourself is the key to all good decisions. The second thing is time is of the essence. Never rush in life, but live an urgent life. Because that's the number one thing. As people get older, they said they wish they would have started. They wish they would have made more mistakes earlier. Not reckless, not irresponsible, but more mistakes, more living. But that is done now. Now that's powerful. And then he says, Gilbert says, that is done now. What is that powerful? Mental health. Mental health. Gilbert is letting go of the past. There's no way you have good mental health. And therefore, there's no way you have a good life if you don't learn to let go. If you made a mistake 10 years ago or 10 minutes ago, letting go is the key to healing and moving forward. You cannot move forward without letting go. You can't, you have to let go of your mistakes. You have to let go of your failures. The cornerback in the NFL, the only way you become a good cornerback, the person who guards the wide receiver, is if you get beat for a play and you have a short memory. Learn the lesson, but have a short memory and let go. That's wisdom. And he says, it's done now. From here on out and beyond, Gilbert's going forward. Bless you, brother. Great comment. Just before dawn, George is in the building. It's a part of the reason why I decided to live in a van. It's like seeing the writing on the wall that wages for unskilled ooh, excuse me, that wages for unskilled workers won't keep up with housing costs. Amen. Just before dawn, me and you are on the same page, brother. Same page. I totally agree. Efficiency is the way of the future. I totally agree with that. The only way the average person will be able to thrive, not just survive, but thrive. What does thrive mean? Thrive means you don't just wake up every day and just get through the day. Thrive means you wake up, you still have problems throughout the day, but you live an overall well and rich life. The only way to thrive is to really live as efficiently as possible. Does that mean everyone should live out of a Jeep Renegade? No. Does that mean everyone should live out of a van like my man just before dawn? No. But that does mean you should live below your means and live efficiently efficiently and i fully agree with you that i believe that efficiency is the future so just before dawn great comment and i also believe in his last part that housing costs are outrageous they no longer build small quaint houses that's how again my journey evolved into living out of a car i i was i had a big condo in a beautiful community and i said i want to downsize because it was very inefficient and i didn't and once i realized i didn't want a family once my dog passed I said, why do I have all this? I don't like to entertain. So I said, I'll just buy a small beach house on uh, just a small studio condo on the beach. The problem, I couldn't find a relatively inexpensive small condo. Because most new condos, most new houses are built big because land developers want to maximize their profit and it's going to eventually bite society because you got a bunch of people that will always be at a certain level and 
I mean, I, it's not just a bunch of people. Like, you know, it, look, like I say, I'm blessed now with a good job. But I've been through different times in life where, look, I know, believe me, I'm a realist. I know that any time a corporation can come to me and say, Sam, look, you know, we had a bad quarter. We had a bad year. We got to lay people off. You know, we love you. We appreciate you. I, that's part of life. I've been there. And so all of a sudden you're going to make great money to, to going to having no health benefits because uh, you can't play Cobra. I don't know if you ever tried to pay Cobra. Forget about it. And no health benefits. You're on unemployment, which only I think the max unemployment you can get is something like five hundred dollars a week. Uh, and you know, so you go from no health. You go from having no health. You go from having a great job, no health benefits, on unemployment for six months, and then you got to find another job. It takes at least four or six months to find a job. So you're lucky if you find one in time before your unemployment benefits run out. So like many people, like I had to do. You go, you have to work any job you can find until you can find a better job. And if you have to go work for $11 or $15 an hour, the only way you really thrive is if you're living very low, well, well below your means. Again, should everyone live out of their car? No, but me and Just Before Dawn, we're on the same page that I have so much flexibility now that I can be more creative. I can do more time. I can spend more time living my dream rather than being in debt to my materialistic items. And that all comes back to efficiency. And houses are no longer built efficiently. They give you a big song and dance about energy efficiency. But houses are built the same way college tuitions are built. You will never get a return on your investment. Because as soon as you buy a house, what's the first thing most people do? They renovate. So if you buy your house for 300000 I don't care if you sell your house for $350,000 in 10 years. You still didn't make money. Why? Because if you buy a house for $300,000, as soon as you buy it, you're going to put 20, the average person will put $20,000 worth of renovations into it. Then over the course of 10 years, they're going to replace a water heater. They're going to replace a furnace. They're going to replace electrical panel. They're going to do more renovations. They're going to buy furniture. They're going to have all these extra maintenance costs, et cetera, et cetera. And they'll probably put $375,000 into it. Their property taxes will go up every year, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, look, even if you sold that property for $400,000 after 10 years, if you bought it for $300,000, you probably just break even. So now, long term, if you bought one house and you stayed there for 30 years, you would probably make out. But most people don't do that nowadays. Why? Because society isn't the same way it was a decade, uh, a generation ago. You don't work with the same corporation for 30, 40 years and you get a pension. Those days are gone. You work with the same company for four or five years, then you know, you know, that stops. Then you have to move to a different town to get a job or you go back to school or whatever. And what do you need? You need flexibility and efficiency. And I don't believe houses in society are structured like that right now in America. And that's why I do see a downfall eventually, in my opinion. I agree with you just before, Dawn. May West. May West says, my dad used to say, follow the money, you'll get all the answers. And then she gave three money emojis um, and a tree emoji, a money grown off trees. May West, your father was a wise man. You know, a lot of times people come to me and say, Sam, you know, most wars are about religion. Or at least they said that at a certain point in life. I said, most wars aren't about religion. Don't be, don't, don't be so naive. Religion is usually used by the leaders of a country. And the leaders usually use religion to manipulate emotionally the people because they want to keep their position of power and money. Who put Saddam Hussein in power? The American government. Go back and do the research. Cheney. Cheney and all that. You know, go look back. Who put Saddam Hussein in power? It's the American government. Who basically caused him to be hanged? It was the American government. I mean, look, now I don't want to start to get to conspiracy theories. But what I'm trying to tell you is... Behind most bad things in life, or behind a lot of things in life, just trace the money. Just trace the money. Uh, but the problem is, don't get too caught up in that mind either, because it never stops. This has been happening since the Roman Empire. You know, I mean, who gave the order? Who gave the order to crucify Jesus? The Roman Empire. The Roman Empire. Why did the Roman Empire want to crucify Jesus? They didn't give a shit about religion. Most, you know, most of it they wanted to, you know, have an atheist population. But 
the religious leaders of that time were putting pressure on the government to crucify Jesus because they believed Jesus was causing a problem with the, their religion. And Jesus didn't like the financial structure of the religion. He, he was shown in the Bible, or it was written about him, that he threw up the money donation table and basically said, this house is no longer a spiritual house. It's a, uh, basically a den of thieves. You use your religion to tax the people. And the religious leaders got upset. They said, you're messing up our system. They went to the government officials, Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate didn't give a shit about Jesus either way. But he was getting pressure from his bosses because he says, look, if you can't control your people in that town, then you're, we're going to remove you from your position of power. And so he said, fuck it. I don't know if Jesus is telling the truth or not. But my hands are clean. That was when he, that was when the scripture said that he put his hands in the... In the uh, in the bucket of water, and that's where you get the thing, he washed his hands of it, he said, look, crucify him, but don't put this blood on my hands, I just did it to keep you guys happy, and the only reason he did it to keep them happy was, his boss was going to remove him from his position, and take him from his place of wealth and power, you trace back most decisions, they're done because of money, that's why it's also important you live below your means, you won't make wise decisions, or decisions based with integrity, when you're, when you're controlled by money, and when you're living above your means, you better believe you're going to be a prick sometimes. And you're going to you're going to be an unfair, unjust person at times because you got to you got to pay the mortgage, you got to pay the rent, you got kids at home. You know, you can't have your wife, you know, you can't have your husband. I mean, it's I you know, when the video I did about living below your means, it was all about that. When you don't live below your means, you, you don't have you don't have the strength, you don't have the integrity, you can't have the boldness to say no, I disagree. Because you can't afford to have that money train stop. Very powerful. Gilbert. I like the group mentality. Some would I just like to be... I'm sorry. He says, I like the group mentality somewhat. I just like to be alone in it. Let it be my decision to mingle if I want. I mean, I like that too, uh, Gilbert. And even, again, if you, even if you like the group mentality, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you don't, there's nothing wrong with that. Or if you're like what Gilbert's saying, like a little bit of each, nothing wrong with that. And I want to be clear, you need a level of social, physical interaction. Again, I do have, you know, friends in real life. I don't, I'm not that social, but I do have a level of social interaction. Why? You know, you need that for your mental health and it's just good. So, you know, again, if you're not hurting anyone, you, you have to, it's all part of what Gilbert said. He's 54 and he's learning himself. As you learn yourself and you know yourself, then you'll, then you'll figure out, the amount of interaction that you need and you do well with. Just before dawn. The one thing I didn't like about the ACA was the, and that stands for the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, was the individual mandate. I hated owing the government money for not having health insurance when filing taxes. Well, just before dawn, I love you, I respect you, but I disagree with you. Because... I, I believe everyone should pay for health insurance. So if you're not going to have health insurance, you should pay a tax because if God forbid you're living in your van and you're driving to Wawa to get a drink or you're driving to the gym and someone, you know, and, and if your truck has a blow, if your truck has a blowout and you go flying and you get hurt and your medical bills exceed what you have covered under your car insurance, who pays the tab? The taxpayer. You know, the, the, point of the government mandate that everyone has to have health care that you know i think you pay like a 50 dollar tax it wasn't much money it was a couple hundred dollar tax was that they want to tell everybody look you just like you need to have car insurance you need to have health insurance you don't want people living without car insurance you don't want people without health insurance because you can take care of yourself great but you know if you just have a heart attack let's just say you don't even get a car accident let's just say you're walking down the street and you get a heart attack you go to the hospital who's going to pay that bill if you don't have health insurance, if that bill's a couple hundred thousand dollars. I mean, so you need to have catastrophic health insurance. Now, I believe the government should pick that up. But part of the individual mandate was saying, look, get everybody to have health insurance. And if your employee doesn't have it, you can have subsidized health care based on your income. Um, so that's the whole point. And that also that started with Governor Romney, a Republican in the 90s, because the Republican mindset was that's what was happening people would go to the emergency room without health insurance and 
and they would basically run up bills and not pay them. And how, how do they eventually get paid? That everyone else eventually pays for them. So part of the mindset of a single-payer system, which eventually that's what ACA, the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare, tried to get evolved to, but it never got there because now it looks like it's going backwards until something else would happen, is that... Is that you again you get everyone in the system so everyone has health insurance so that long-term health care costs go down but that wasn't the end all answer the, the end all answer is government has to intervene you have to have certain regulation on health care providers and eventually you know the negotiation of you know part of what trump ran on too was like the prescription drugs and all those different things that he would negotiate the prices but that's you know i don't see any of that happening um that, so that's my disagreement, but again, I respect that a lot of people don't agree with a government-run healthcare system. I do, uh, just to, so everyone should be covered with catastrophic health insurance. Uh, so the tax to make you say, to me, I look at it as the same way as car insurance. Everyone should have car insurance. If you don't have car insurance, uh, you can get a ticket. You will get a ticket. If you get pulled over and you don't produce a, a car insurance uh, certificate, you get a ticket. Uh, so it's the same thing to me with... Healthcare. If you don't have healthcare insurance, you know you get a, a tax at the end of the year. Uh, not anymore after Trump appealed it. Uh, but that's just my opinion. So I want to say that just before Dawn is a great viewer. I respect him and I respect his different opinion. And um, that's part of life. Just different opinions. Uh, Renee, I agree. We all will get sick. We all need healthcare. I do truly hope President Trump will fix this mess, or at least be honest if he can't fix it. And stop, uh, and stop his plan. Yeah, I agree too. Look, I hope that I know Trump has said in the past. A lot of people say that Trump used to be Democrat and he used to he used to support Hillary before he ran against her in a lot of ways. He used to support Bill. At one time, he's quoted to be saying Bill was one of our Bill Clinton was one of our greatest presidents. So, um, look, the problem is I don't think Trump is engaged in the details enough to get involved. I think, but that doesn't mean he can't still effectively do his job. So. Look, I hope Trump is able to do a good job overall. I'm not one of those people that I want him to fail just because I didn't vote for him. And I think that he's, he does some things better than Hillary Clinton. My What really concerned me is this tax reform was not good negotiation. I, that was like his first piece of legislation that he had his name on. And corporations got a huge tax cut and the regular people got scugats. And nobody got their minimum wage and nobody... you know. Nobody got significant thing, the common person, only the 10%. And in addition, anytime he's faced with tough things, what does he do? He goes back to, you know, athletes better salute the flag. He goes back to, he's still blaming Hillary Clinton. He's still, you know, at some point, you know, and I, 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 I this is where I disagree with Trump. He takes so much credit for the stock market, but I remember when Obama first took off it, he said, don't buy the stock market, Obama's horrible, he's going to bring it down. Stock market tripled under Obama. I don't, I don't remember him saying that Obama tripled the stock market. But I remember, I see him in one year, the stock market went up and went up a lot. He's, now, if that goes down, will he take the same credit? I don't think so because he didn't give Obama credit for tripling it. He's not a fair evaluator. So I know some people like that. I know some people are unlike. But that's my opinion. I'm not going to pander and say I agree with you. I don't. He's an unfair evaluator. Obama tripled the stock market, gave him no praise. He does one good year in the stock market, gives all the praise. He gets a tough question. What does he do? Better salute the flag. That's what his tweets go to. That has nothing to do, and that's a peaceful protest. So that's a whole other thing. I mean, I get fired up on. I did, Look, I hope Trump is able to do some good things. I don't want him to fail just for the sake of failing. But overall, I tend to agree, disagree with his policy. Um, that causes people to divide a little bit. I know because some people... Some people don't want government. It's got to be a balance of private business and government intervention, in my opinion. It's not all government. It's not all free market. You know, you can't, you got to have some regulation, but you got to have a level of a free market. The balance is always the hardest part. Um, and that's what it is. Trump said he has a big button to push. Yeah, he has a big button to push uh, with his conflicts with North Korea. But again, North Korea is small p peanuts. He can't see beyond the obvious. Beyond the obvious, it's not North Korea. North Korea is nobody. Hillary Clinton said the same thing. They said, what would you do in, during the presidential debates? She said, what would you do if North Korea uh, sent a nuclear weapon? She goes, North Korea would never do that because as soon as they send their weapon, we would annihilate them off the face of this earth. 
North Korea is not the problem. You have to think deeper. The problem is they're on the border of China. China does not want us on their border. So Trump, you know, is not looking beyond the obvious. You know, the you know Pakistan has has uh, nuclear weapons. Do we care about that? We don't. We don't care that 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 was where that was where Bin Laden was found. Pakistan, not North Korea. We don't care that they have nuclear weapons. Why do we care that North Korea has nuclear weapons? And you have to understand that China is never going to want us on their border. And so it's like it's a fight over nothing. But what does it do? It distracts you from the issues. It's you know it's look America is always going to have like a foe. It's for world domination. Um, it's just what it is. I mean, I'm not against it, but this is, you know, this is part of life. Uh, but it, it, we'll see. And, it, it, you know, he keeps saying, you know, build up the government. He's building up the military like never before. He's but eventually, if somebody calls him on his bluff, I mean, he'll do it like he did in Vietnam. He won't join the army, but he'll salute everyone who does. That's my opinion. That's what the facts are. His kids will never join the army. They love to talk about, like, during the holidays, oh, salute the army, salute, but they'll never join the army. They'll never be part of the army. Uh, so does that mean you're not a patriot if you don't join the army? No. But it means you're not a patriot if you talk up military and you talk up war, but you're not willing to sign up. Now, if you want to talk off, if you want to talk up war and then sign up, then, you know, that's what it is. But if you talk up war and you don't sign up, then you're a hypocrite, in my opinion. Uh, but if you try to strive for peace... Then it uh, doesn't matter if you do a uh, military. Uh, that's my opinion on it. Milano. Like uh, nuke stuff. Uh, Melania dry cleaner is about $1,000 a week. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, and like I said, Milana's a, a legal immigrant. Uh, she got her papers from being a model. And she started on a, a work visa. Uh, so I would like to see her uh, share her pathway to citizenship in addition to building a wall I would like Trump to explain what was the pathway to citizenship for Melania Trump, because she's a legal immigrant, and uh, how can the same people that fled their country do the same system as Melania? Can you please give us that blueprint? Uh, but I doubt they'll talk about that. Um, been there, nice. Milano, one day I will invite you and uh, Emilio to play golf. Yeah, down in uh, Mar-a-Lago. Uh, Milano, Nokia has a good camera, 40 megapits. Uh, I'm, yeah, I like Samsung. Uh, Nokia uh, is an older style of manufacturer, but I'm sure they do have some good ones. Mae West. Amen to Gilbert. The great thing about being uh, in America is you can always start again. No, America is a blessing, a land of opportunity. Uh, America is a place where you can disagree uh, with the government. You can protest, but some people don't believe in that. Some people believe in the authoritarian view. But I believe you know you can disagree respectfully uh, and that you can protest peacefully and uh, you can start over again. And uh, I believe in that. Uh, May West. Also, ha I have an, a, a baking YouTube channel on only uploaded one video. Plan to do more in 2018. Well, I will check your videos out. And anyone interested, I would also recommend checking out May West's uh, YouTube channel. I believe I was sharing this with a friend today. That self-expression is part of healing and part of developing your passion. So... As you upload videos and as you share and self-express your passion, you build your life. So, Mae West, uh, keep keep pushing forward on that. Check, uh, she says, check me out. Miss Sugar takes over. I will take that. I will check that out. And I hope you're not using too much sugar because sugar is dangerous. How much sugar is the average male uh, recommended to have per day? 38 grams. How much uh, was the maximum sugar a female should have? Per day, 25 uh, grams. Uh, how much do I have? More than 38, but not too much more. Uh, so we all still overeat. Uh, I'm not perfect either, but it's good to be mindful of those metrics. Selling John. So true. My current marina location has the same bayfront view as a million-dollar condo with slip. I pay hardly nothing. Love it. Yeah, I mean, that's the benefit of... Uh, um, <sighs> living on your boat is that you have a, a view of the beautiful ocean uh, every day and you're not paying uh, what most people would pay for it. Excuse me. That's the benefit of a lot of people um, who say living out of their car when they pull up to the mountains or even in the desert or by ocean. Uh, I did a video when I was in Florida. I was sitting under a palm tree. Uh, you can have a beautiful view all you have to do is just move your car or you move your boat to a certain location. 
Now, you do pay a price for you sacrifice a certain level of convenience. Uh, you sacrifice a certain level of conventional life. So it comes with a cost, but if you're willing to do it and you're passionate about how you like to live uh, non-conforming, then it's a blessing. Christopher. Thanks for your input, Sam. I have a positive YouTube channel teaching other locksmiths. That's a great trait. And people who are looking to do it themselves. There's no better feeling than helping others. Hey, Amen, Chris. I'll check that out, brother. Thank you. Renee, I'm a realist. Too. I'm a realist, too, in a positive way. I agree with that. That's why I like you, Sam. Like minds. Laugh out loud. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Renee. Uh, Gilbert. Amen. Christopher, father and son locksmith. Amen. Check that out. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, it was a good chat, and I'm very thankful. Uh, I want to manage my time here. It's a little bit later than I normally go, but it was just in a flow, so I let the creativity go. Thank everybody for their positivity uh, and love. Uh, sorry if my opinion is different than yours, and that causes you hurt and pain, and certainly if you feel you have to go another direction, I understand that. I'm not into controlling people. Uh, but I'm very thankful for everything, uh, for all your comments. Uh, no matter what you do in life, try to be as positive as possible. Uh, and just be yourself, and um, and that's it. You'll figure out the rest for you. I believe in you. Believe in yourself. And uh, have a peaceful and beautiful night.